Why do Asians real why get straight A's? Why do Asians real why? Become doctors and lawyers? Why do Asians real why play the piano? Many people believe that the reason has to do with the pressure to perform and the pressure to conform, however, it goes much deeper than that M. Yuk, much deeper. This didactic novel reveals the truths about Asian culture, which will shock you to the marrow of your bones a and d open a hidden world of long guarded secrets about the author Anson Chi, born and raised in New York City, is an author, politician, model, activist e environmental, social, political a and d retired engineer he currently lives in a myriad of places, including Los Angeles and San Diego. Yellow on the outside. Shame on the inside. Asian culture revealed. Anson Chi. Yellow on the outside, shame on the inside, Asian culture revealed revised first edition, published by Globus Publishing and Self-Publication Copyright Copyright 2008 by Anson Chi. Al Rights Reserved including the right to reproduce this book or portions thereof in any form whatsoever. Any part of this book may be reproduced, distributed, disseminated, or transmitted in any form or by any means, electronic or mechanical, including photocopying, recording, scanning, uploading via the Internet, or by any information storage and retrieval system, in other words, share and spread this book like hotcakes. Knowledge is a right of the people. United States Constitution, the First Amendment. No law. Dot abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press. Authors note. This is a work of fiction. Names, characters, places, and incidents either are the product of the author's imagination or are used fictitiously, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, events, or locales is entirely coincidental. All parts of this book are done by Anson Chi. Website, http colon forward slash .com. For questions or comments, please contact ronpaller at gmail.com. Thanks to you, the reader. Ryan and Christy. John Winston Ono Lennon. Martin Luther King, Jr. Mohandas Mahatma Gandhi. Congressman and my president, Ron Paul. To all those that helped, you know who you are. To all those that didn't help, you know who you are. Bands that kept me focused while writing, in no particular order, Warsaw Joy Division New Order. The Stooges. The Velvet Underground. Bell E. and Sebastian. Interpol. The Verve Richard Ashcroft. The Smith Stephen Patrick Morrissey. The Cure. And you will know us by the trail of dead. Many, many more. A note to the reader. I don't usual why like to write an introduction any introduction, including a note to the reader since we all want to get to the nitty gritty, but suffices to say, this note is important or else I wouldn't have written it. This didactic novel is based on Asian culture, specifical why East Asian culture which includes Japanese, Vietnamese, Korean, Thai, Chinese, etc. This novel is not based on the Asian culture of Russia, Tajikistan, or even Iraq which are all countries in the continent of Asia. I must state this distinction of clarification so that there's no confusion in regards to the ethnicities and racial heritages mentioned in this novel. Moreover, the philosophy of this novel targets Asians in general, not specific. When I say Asians overachieve to get straight A's, for instance, I'm not saying every Asian specific why I'm saying Asians in general. I must state this distinction of clarification so that there's no B. UT there's the exception of, since there are always exceptions to every rule. Furthermore, the information in this book is not intended to offend, it is intended to change. Please finish reading this book before formulating any prejudices, in order to acquire the full grasp of my message. Al in Al, this novel is based somewhat on my life but mostly on the lives of others, the experiences, 
the austere upbringing of the characters, the opinions, the philosophies, the principles, the tenets, and the events some of them true, even the characters, though I have disguised all their names. Of course, not everything is true because this is a novel after all, thus, you can't sue me, not that you would anyway. So without further ado, please enjoy the journey from the Gospels of a former Asian. Outset 1. Doctor or lawyer my only two options. These would be your only two options if you have Asian parents. You would think that you would be able to pick your own career, since you know, it is your own damn life. But not when you have Asian parents. So my only two options, doctor or lawyer. I wonder if my parents even know why I should become a doctor or a lawyer. Is it because doctors save lives and lawyers protect the innocent? I bet they didn't know that doctors these days are only trained in surgery and prescribing medicine and pretty much nothing else, doctors don't know anything about proven alternative medicine, homeopathic remedies, chiropractic therapy, acupuncture, yet, they make all the big bucks. And they're treated like gods because they supposedly know it all, even though they haven't cured one disease since what SM. Alpox? As a matter of fact, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, even acne is on the rise and more prevalent than ever before. Shouldn't these reputable, knowledgeable doctors, with such advanced medical technology, know why there are so many new diseases such as acid reflux? And why is there nothing being cured today, not the common cold, not even polio? Maybe it real why is all about the money since doctors make big bucks on the sick and dying but not a penny once you're cured. Because once you're cured, you're no longer a customer I mean patient, I guess the medical profession isn't all that benevolent or caring. Perhaps I should consider becoming a lawyer, after all, it is my only other choice. I could go to law school and graduate magna cum laude, then my parents would be real why proud of their only son. Besides, attorneys work real why hard to protect the innocent oh. Are do. They. I read in the paper about how a group of lawyers filed motions against DNA testing for prison inmates sentenced before 1970, because many of them would have been found innocent, if they were indeed tested. And if they were found innocent, it would obviously be catastrophic for those insidious lawyers, money over morals, I suppose. Now, I'm not exactly Mother Teresa or the Dalai Lama, but I'd like to be able to sleep at night knowing that I didn't put someone innocent in jail for the rest of his or her life. And besides, they do have lawyer jokes for a reason. My personal favorite, W. Hats the difference between a lawyer and a gigolo. A gigolo only screws one person at a time. Hilarious. So I guess my parents want me to become a doctor or a lawyer, for completely different reasons, other than what's important l. Ike saving lives or protecting the innocent from an unjust, inequitable system, reasons being money and status, which of course, lead to power. My parents real you want my little sister Jordan and me to become doctors oh. Our lawyers if we couldn't hack it in medical school j. UST so we can make lots of money and then they can brag to all of their friends. I real why can't think of any other reasons, since third place on the totem pole of Asian career options is engineering, and there's nothing moral or ethical about being an engineer, only the paycheck matters, so in the end, it all boils down to money. So since it's real why all about money, I guess I might as WEL become a prostitute, because IL make just as much as any lawyer, and both professions are just as equal why immoral. Plus, I won't have to put up with going to class anymore and I'll save my parents so much money, it's a win-win situation for everyone. Two bad Asian guys have small you know what, down you know where, so prostitution is out of the question. Of course, I'm just joking about becoming a prostitute, but I real why may not be joking if I don't get into medical school. Between you and me, what I real why aspire to be ever since I was a wee laddie born and raised in Irvine, California is a writer. I remember telling mommy that I wanted to become a writer, inspired by scores of the greats, Chaucer, Hemingway, 
Joyce, Faulkner, L. Eisen, Orwell, Gaiman, among many, many more. But she gave me a look, with harsh, derisive eyes, and shouted, Right? What you write? Bullshit. Stupid boy. T. Hat pretty much. Ended my never got up and running career as a writer. W.E.L., I guess I'm done with my diatribe. I tend to digress inexorably whenever I have to sit here at the library waiting for Jordan to get done with her studying and her research. I don't even know why she uses the UCI, University of California, Irvine, library, since she goes to Stanford University, for crying out loud. Jordan should stay at Stanford, even on the weekends and not have me take her around everywhere. Just because I wasn't smart enough to get into Stanford doesn't mean I have to be her personal chauffeur. Instead, my little sister decides to come to my school and take up my time. And she constantly reminds me of how she got a full scholarship to attend Stanford B. IG deal. It's not. Like UCI is deplorable by any means n. OT that it's all that great either. Everyone knows that it's. The school to settle for if you can't make it to any of the Ivy League schools. And you're always reminded of how you didn't make it, a special why when you drive to UCI on Harvard Avenue, which passes Stanford, Oxford and Columbia Court Apartments and runs through the prestigious streets, Cornell, Columbia, Berkeley and last but not least, Yale Avenue. I guess they're telling us that UCI is just as good as any of the Ivy League schools. Somehow. I don't think street names and apartment courts are going to measure up to that standard. I would have gone anywhere else other than UCI, but I didn't have a choice in the matter since my parents are paying for my COL Edge tuition. My parents love the idea of me attending COL Edge here in Irvine, because it means that I have to live at home, which means that they have absolute, tyrannical control over every little detail of my life t. He dream of every Asian parent. So Jordan goes to Stanford while I settle for UCI. She was always mommy and daddy's pride and joy, the wunderkind of our family. Mommy would always say to me, in her fob fresh off the boat be. Broken English, Joe. Aitchinson. Why you can't be more like Jordan. She very smart and always the best at everything. Daddy would then add, in his much more fob, broken English, Joe. Aitchinson. We don't want just do your best. We want you be best. You first in family to go C-O-L-H. You need make us proud. Asians here in America would call Asian foreigners fobs, because of their thick and heavy accent, as if they real why just got off the boat from Asia. Fob is quite derogatory, needless to say. Whenever my parents would scold and yell at me, I would drift off into reverie and think about Emily Lee, the most beautiful girl that I've ever laid my eyes on. I've known her since middle school oh. K, the truth is that I don't real why know her, but I've been in almost every class with her. Let me tell you that she's absolutely stunning in every way, tall, thin, and statuesque. Her eyes are wide but nicely shaped, and deep set with a gleam of chestnut. And her hair oh. H my god, her hair l. Ike pure, fine silk matted in black velvet. I can't believe I sound just like a damn romance novel. And she has the most radiantly clear, lightly suntanned face that makes her ivory teeth shine so luminously. But it's her insatiably full, lush lips, turned down slightly at the corners, that speak her most resounding feature W. L actual Y, her. Most resounding feature is her S. And if you must know, most Asian girls have an ass that's flat like a brick wall with breasts to match. But Emily Total Y defies the natural laws of Asian genetics by having abounding, voluptuous breasts and a captivating lower exterior. It's a good thing that she didn't make it to any of the Ivy League schools, or else I wouldn't have the absolute pleasure of staring at her in class. And it's also a good thing that she was forced with the proverbial two options of D. Octor or Lawyer J. UST like me S. Oh that we ended up taking the same pre-med biology classes for our final year here at UCI. 
Eh? Re you daydreaming again? Jordan asks, sneaking up from behind in order to startle me on purpose. She loves to catch me daydreaming, a special why when I'm sitting at a table near lots of people, so that I'm embarrassed as hell. N. Oh, just thinking, I reply apathetical why. W. L, we've been here all morning. Have you gotten anything done? Jordan asks. With a more patronizing tone this time. T. I am E flies when you're thinking hard. W. Hate of her. We have to get back home. Mommy and Daddy are waiting for us. On our drive back home, I notice the natural O. Our rather contrived SC. Henry of Irvine. You'd be surprised at how untarnished and strictly parallel the roads are, with concrete wall S along the sides of these roads holding factitious vines and descending sidewalks neatly paved with erect signs posting the words, no parking at all times. The city of Irvine doesn't like parked cars because they taint the perfect, suburban atmosphere. Even the trees are in on it, perfectly aligned as if they're bowling pins set in an array of rows. But you never notice these things, a special why when they become a part of your everyday life l. Ike the copious number of exact styled homes with impeccably cut, green lawns, surrounded by spaciously rectangular gardens of every flower of every color. I just happen to notice these things this time around, because I real why don't want to talk to Jordan. Besides, she's humming this rather netlessome tune while I'm driving. She always has a surreptitious way of annoying me even when she's not trying. I can't decide if Jordan is the greatest bane of my life or my greatest envy. 2. As I pull into the garage, Jordan hastily reaches into the back seat for her mountain of books. It's obvious that she plans to walk into the house to present herself as a studious, diligent daughter, while I walk in empty-handed like a forlorn beggar on a rainy day. We get inside, and I immediately notice a myriad of new MCAT preparation books on the living room table, obviously driving the point home even further that my future career is completely controlled by my despotic parents and not by me t. Hanks, Mommy, and Daddy. Joe. Aitchinson. Why you have no books? Mommy inquires, with a doer and inquisitive. Look. Why? Oh you know study. Joe and studied hard for the both of us. I'll just live with her when she becomes a rich, successful doctor. D. Auntie make jokes. I want you study hard. You need make us proud. Mommy scolds. With affirmation. Why? Yes, Mommy, I'll study hard so I can be a good doctor. I reply apathetical why. I quickly scurry to my room, before she fires a fusillade of other pot shots. I can sum up why mommy and daddy are the way that they are with one, single word, culture. Mommy and daddy are from the old country, and their parents grew up in the old country, and their parents grew up in the same, old country. All of them pretty much grew up with the same antiquated ideology of culture, a culture based on austerity. Therefore, my parents are very stern and stubborn in their ways, more so than normal parents, if there is such a thing as normal parents. Mommy and Daddy both grew up in a destitute village and had to work very hard to come to America, or so they would say. Mommy and Daddy always lecture me on how they've sacrificed so much to come here to America, for opportunity and success. I wonder if they've ever considered coming to America for freedom, since it's the land of the free and the home of the brave. Then again, with all the dumbing down these days, America's become the land of the sheep and the home of the slaves. But I just find it rather interesting that they didn't come to America for the freedom of religion, or for the freedom of speech, or for the freedom of assembly, or for the freedom of anything. In fact, I've never met an Asian parent that's ever mentioned coming to America for freedom, liberty, or patriotism. I've only heard Asian parents mention opportunity and success oh. Opportunity to make lots of money, their credence for. Success. It's quite obvious that they came to America just to make money, since in the end, 
it's always about the money. Basical why, the truth is that Asians would never move to America, if there were no opportunities to make lots of money. The sole purpose of their lives is to f. o allow the money. This posit a word in which no normal person would know unless he or she's been forced to suffer countless hours of after-school SAT classes I s the first of what I call my Asian pride. Theorems, starting with money, then status, and final why, power. With just my three simple Asian pride theorems, I can reveal the truths about Asian culture w. Heather it's Japanese, Korean, Chinese, Vietnamese, Thai, etc. And all the reasons why Asians do the things that they do. First, Asians are obsessed with money and will do anything to get it. Second, money is conducive to the status that Asians seek, hence d. Octor or lawyer. Third and uppermost, Asians want power, the power to control, the power to influence, the power to persuade, the power from attention, the power over relationships. These p. Arsenal powers. Do not seem like a big deal, since they're not exactly big powers like governmental or corporate power, but trust me when I say that they're everything to Asians. I know that it's hard to believe what I'm saying, that smart, straight a, Hard-working Asians can be so devious and diabolical. But just give me a chance with this backstage pass to my life and you can see everything for yourself. Anyway, what's even worse is that my parents changed their religion from Buddhism to Christianity, just so that they could fit in with our church-obsessed neighbors t. Alk about. Selling out? Their explanation is that they're minorities and need to do whatever it takes to get ahead, including switching religions, Regardless, I know they sold out. Speaking of minorities, the majority of people here in California are actual Y comprised of minorities, not Caucasian. And as everyone knows, Native Americans were here first when they massively outnumbered early European settlers, so technical Y, Caucasians were minorities e. Then by virtue of blood. The vast majority of Caucasians in America have mixed blood, Jewish blood, Spanish blood, Native American blood, and even African blood. Also, don't you find it ironic that the word Asian is mixed into the word, Caucasian? Summarily, by virtue of blood, Caucasians are minorities just like the rest of us. But since there has to be a class of elites and a class of peons, I guess we all have to be the minorities e. Then though, Caucasians were here second just like the rest of us. And since we're the minorities, we've been emblematical why segregated as Asian Americans, African Americans, and even Jewish Americans, but the strange thing is that I've never heard of Caucasian Americans. More importantly, why can't we all just be cal Americans, since all of us are, after all, Americans? My parents wouldn't care, though, since they only care about money, status, and power b. I.g. surprise. I remember last summer when my parents purchased a new BMW 550i, because the outdated BMW 3 series that we had was exactly that oh. Outdated. They explained. That we, as a family, needed to k. EP up. With the rest of the residents in our neighborhood. In order to stay competitive. If that isn't a good enough reason to buy a 550i, I don't know what is I. Love sarcasm. So let's say that we real why are competing with our neighbors and the rest of the residents in Irvine. Who set up the competition then? Who are all the contestants? Do they even know what they're competing for? Oh, that's right, status, the second of my Asian pride theorems. They're competing to see who is on top of the soup. Bourbon food chain. Let's say. Hypothetical why that my family's on top. Now what? Do we get a trophy? Do we get a lifetime supply of ass kissing from other Irvine residents? We don't get crap. Actual why, what we get? Unbeknownst to my parents I. As people talking behind our backs and people spreading. Gossip. I'm sure they're all saying, L. 
okay at Johnson's family buying that BMW 550i, trying to show us up. I often wonder what would happen to all these pretentiously arrogant people here in Irvine, if oh, our actual y when t he big earthquake comes, it can happen at any time since Al of California is on a goddamn fault line. Then their opulent homes, expensive cars, and every precious, material possession would be lost at a moment's whim, would they still be oh, and top? Then. These pretentiously arrogant people are just like everyone else. They have to put on a pair of pants, one leg at a time, just like everyone else, they have to take the same nasty shit in the toilet, just like everyone else. The only difference is that they have an extra electronic digit in their bank account W. Hoop to do. I don't see why it's so special to be a. And top. Also, I find it rather ironic that we had to buy our vainglorious BMW 550i from a dealer, so in essence, the dealer would be a. And top. But then the dealer had to get his line of BMWs. From the person who owns all of BMW, then the person who owns all of BMW is required to pay taxes, fees, and other expenses to another person oh. And top. So even if you go to the very. Top essay. Why for example, the king I. T still not the top. How many kings have fell and throughout. The history of human civilization. Last I checked, kings A. And D queens O. F are current day and. H, only have purely ceremonial roles and no governmental power. Britain's prime minister has more power than the queen, same with Norway, even Thailand. I guess that means no one real Y is O. And top. It's LIL usury perception that's completely A. And D ultimately B. All shit. An unexpected knock comes at my door. I guess the parental unit is ready for another verbal onslaught. The door opens even before I can say see. Oh min so. Much for privacy. Joe. Aitchinson. You go to Palo Alto this weekend. Your auntie miss you very much. You never visit. Daddy commands firmly, with a noticeably condescending tone. I guess it's daddy's turn to play B. Add cop. Then again, neither of my parents ever plays G. Good cop. W. Hi can't Jordan go? She goes to school up there and auntie likes her better anyway. Auntie real Y likes Jordan more a. Eh? Hell of a lot more. Joe. Written see auntie all the time. You need be good and go. B. Ut I have plans this weekend. I real Y don't have any plans, but sitting at home doing nothing is much better than having Asian relatives criticize you. Why? Oh you have new plan. Go see auntie. Daddy shoots back, giving me a serious, stone cold look t. Hat can't be good. I usual why give up whenever he gives me that look. Why? Yes, daddy. I confirm unwillingly. And then I consider inviting my best friend Gabriel, since best friends are supposed to suffer with you. See. And I ask Gabriel to come since it'll be a long drive. Gabriel and I grew up together. Here in Irvine. He has to deal with the same shit that I have to deal with, except he doesn't give a damn, or at least, he plays it off like he doesn't. Gee. Abril Aoki is bad, daddy scolds, very harshly, eh? And very bad influence on you. You. To always go play and never do homework. He never care about straight A. He just like you. Here he goes again with the straight A's. W. Hi are you always talking about straight A's? It's obvious that you only want Jordan and me to get straight A's so that you can brag to all your friends about how much better your kids are than theirs. N. O T true. I care about you and Jordan future. Yeah. Right, I'm sure we've all heard this. Before. Why? Oh you only care about comparing us with all your friends' sons and daughters and bragging about who gets the best grades. I'm not stupid. 
I say smugly, feeling pretty damn. Good for calling him out. Why? Oh you always talk back. Jordan never talks back. She very good, not like you. F. I N E. I'll get straight A's, only if you learn how to drive. I swear, it's because of you that everyone thinks Asian people can't drive. I could tell that daddy is a little hesitant on how to reply. He final why musters, I. Drive. Very safe. Not crazy like Americans. S. Your, daddy, I reply sarcastical why. I. F you say so. It's funny how Asian people can. Solve complex math problems like differential calculus and get perfect SAT scores with our eyes closed, yet, we can't drive worth a damn. I might as WEL have a little fun arguing, since. There's no chance of me winning this one. Daddy shakes his head, sighing with reproach. I. No want argue. You be good when. You see auntie, not like you bad now. A gust of wind blows right into my eyes as daddy slams the door violently behind him, I know that door won't make it past my graduation with all this arguing. But arguments like this one are typical in my loving, caring family, they happen all the time and they never seem to end. I real why wish I could live somewhere far away, perhaps Timbuktu, which is in Mali. I know this because I'm Asian, we're supposed to know everything. But if I know everything, then why don't I know much about my parents and their strict, bizarre behavior? Like how my parents don't sleep in the same bed even though they've been married for what seems like F. R. Score and seven years ago. And it's not just me, it's the same with Gabriel's parents. My parents argue and fight to the point to where a divorce is imminent, however, can't divorce because of custom, and more importantly, S.A. Ving face. In the Asian community, as W.E.L. as S.A. Ving face. Back in their native country. Saving face refers to always maintaining a good image in spite of bad circumstances. So instead of divorce, the next best thing is to sleep in separate beds and in separate rooms, so that they can get 8 hours of sleep alone a. Ka. Personal paradise a. And re-energize themselves for the remaining 16 hours together. A.K.A. Hell. I told Gabriel about my S.E. Parade bed, separate room. Theorem a while back and he. Agreed indubitably. In fact, he reciprocated with a story about the strict, bizarre Asian behavior of child swapping. If a child of one Asian family performs poorly in school, then that family will swap its child with another child, typical Y from a relative. This can be thought of as a military school program, to strengthen and discipline both children into exceedingly exceptional students. With all this swapping, Asian parents should become swingers themselves st. Uphid. Joke, I know. Because of these types of strict, bizarre behaviors, it's no wonder that there's a lack of affection in Asian families. Most people don't know this, but it's very uncommon for Asian parents to hug their kids, and it's extremely rare for Asian parents to kiss their kids. I remember hanging out with Joe Romig, an old friend of mine, back in the 8th grade. I would always go to his house after school, because his mom would make the most delicious grill ed cheese sandwiches. Food is every boy's weakness J. UST ask any girl. I don't. Recall doing much at Joe's house, but the one thing that always caught my eye was his mom kissing him on both cheeks, then his forehead, then embracing him with a very tender hug. I got scared the first time Joe's mom hugged me, it felt awkward because I wasn't used to it. I was used to getting hit by my parents whenever I did something wrong. Hell, I even got hit for just thinking something wrong. I almost start to cry whenever I reminisce. Most of my past memories involve my parents spanking me with an old feather duster. A feather duster is a thin, rigid stick made from yellow bamboo, with endless brown and black chicken feathers sprouting from the middle to the top. Of course, it's supposed to be used for dusting dirt, 
but instead it's used for dusting the asses of Asian kids be. Ad and good. You're not truly Asian until you've gotten your ass whipped with a feather duster, it's a very sick and disturbing rite of passage for Asian kids. I don't get spanked anymore, much to my regret, but I still see that damn feather duster up above the mantle of the fireplace in the living room. My parents like to keep it there as a constant reminder of how I need to fear and obey, kind of like Tamerlane with his pyramid of human skull s, built as a reminder for his enemies to fear and obey. My parents real why are like Tamerlane. But at least I had it better than Gabriel. His parents spanked him with a damn ping pong paddle. We all know that Asians are good at ping pong so I guess his parents wanted to get in a little practice m. IV practice their spin technique on Gabriel's ass. Just looking at that old feather duster reminds me of severe spankings, feathers flying off then falling very slowly, simultaneously with the tears from my eyes, every time I received a lick. Spanking was pretty much the only affection that I've ever received from my parents. Every time I got spanked, I would remember Joe's mom hugging me. I've never told my parents about Joe's mom hugging me. They wouldn't care anyway. Asian parents like to use the excuse that hugging and kissing would make their kids soft, like T. Ho's Americans A. Ka. W. Hide Americans. Asians typical Y view T. Ho's Americans. As lazy, spoiled, and stupid. Funny how they only say this behind their backs. It's also funny how they say those Americans, yet, they themselves are Americans, even though they don't consider themselves to be. This goes to show that they didn't come to America for freedom, liberty, or patriotism but instead, just for the opportunity to make lots of money. Anyway, my parents don't want Jordan and me to grow up weak, with all that hugging and kissing. But I don't think that it's weak for parents to show a little emotion and affection. In fact, I think it would actual why help make things better. I think Asian families would be a lot more caring and nurturing and not so uncommunicative and distant. So instead of focusing so much on money, they should perhaps focus on compassion and love. After all, Asians can love money as much as they want, but money never loves back. Anyway, I don't think a hug is too much to ask, I real why don't. I could honestly care less about a big house, a nice car or all the money in the world. All I real you want from my parents is a hug. 3. I got up this morning feeling very fatigued and exhausted, because both of my parents woke me up at 6 o'clock, so that I would be ready to go visit auntie up in Palo Alto. You would think that they'd cut me some slack and let me sleep in, since it's Saturday but not when you have Asian parents. I've never been to boot camp, but I'm sure this is pretty close, the only difference being that I'm not required to wear camouflage and shoot innocent civilians. I could complain some more, but then I start thinking about my cousins over in Asia. I have it so much better than them. I remember staying at their house a few years ago, and they were getting up early for school, even during the summer. In fact, they had to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, just so that they could get ready for tutoring. After that was done, they had to get ready for more school at 7 o'clock. Then after school let out at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, they still had to go to an after-school tutoring class. By the time it was over, they barely had an hour to eat dinner, because of all the homework accumulated that day. I bitch and moan about how I have it bad, but I'm living in paradise compared to my cousins. Now what real why upset me about the whole situation with my cousins was that they accepted this lifestyle without any objection. They never complained, and they never said a word about their struggles to anyone. So before I left to fly back to America, I took the time to talk to them about their abject enslavement. I felt bad for them, I still do. I just had to know why they didn't stand up to their parents. Their answers were the same, t. That's just how it is. Here. If you don't get good grades, then your parents won't love you. I couldn't believe what I heard. How does getting good grades equate to love? 
Plenty of kids got bad grades and still grew up to become successful Albert Einstein, for instance. I real why got upset when I heard this from my cousins. And I felt such remorse for them as WEL. No wonder Asians grow up all screwed up, only caring about money, status, and power. Now I know that it's not just with my family. It's pervasive with Asian families all over the world. So there's real why no difference between an Asian parent in America and an Asian parent overseas. Asian children are basically why sheep, raised and herded by their parents. And these prize-winning sheep become doctors or lawyers, aka cash cows for their parents l. Ike. An investment or retirement fund. Then when Asian parents grow old, their kids uh. Our retirement. Fund I should say e. ND up paying for their retirement and taking care of their every need and desire. No wonder Asian parents want their kids to become doctors and lawyers t. Hats. Where all the money's at? Anyway, I'm spending way too much time talking about sheep and cows, and besides, I need to hit the road ASAP, considering the fact that there's always traffic in LA too. Four sevenths, every day of the week. Many people may feel that the greatest mystery of Al is the origin of the universe or life outside of Earth, but the real greatest mystery of Al is traffic in LA, why is there traffic all the freaking time, even at 2 o'clock in the morning? A government agency needs to be set up to meticulously analyze traffic congestion, since our tax dollars are being wasted anyway, and it might as WEL go towards solving a problem that everyone agrees to fix. All of the sudden, I realize that I'm real why in no condition to drive, still sleepy and tired from having to wake up early, so off to the kitchen I go for some delicious, organic coffee a. Eh? T. Least there's one good thing about being in this house. As I start to make a fresh pot, I notice a myriad of calendars on the wall by the refrigerator. My parents would always leave six years worth of calendars, plus the current year. The reason is because the number six represents good luck in Asian culture. One thing about Asian parents is that they are completely obsessed with good luck. There's even a book published each year, forecasting the good luck days to get married and the bad luck days not to get married. At Asian weddings, there's always a tea pouring ceremony in which pouring tea for your relatives is required in exchange for money and gold tea. Alk about using an excuse to get money. Speaking of excuses to get money, the Chinese have an egregiously blatant way of doing it. If you are invited to a wedding, you are required to pay a fee at the reception and if you don't go, you have to pay a portion of that obligatory fee and oh exceptions or you will lose face. No wonder China leads the world in paper production I. Invitations get sent out like hotcakes. And when you give money at a wedding, it has to be an even number or else it's considered bad luck. Now get this, Asians are also required to give money at a funeral a. N. Odd number or else it's bad luck. As if giving required money isn't enough, Asians are even picky about the parody. I can go on all day about Asian superstition, but I real why have to get going. I haven't even started packing yet. Since it's an Asian custom to always dress to impress, a special why with my relatives, I start by reaching for my Louis Vuitton suitcase from the top shelf of my closet and setting it on top of my bed. Then I put in a few Banana Republic stretch polos, with matching bootcut indigo jeans and some Hugo Boss dress shirts with dress pants. I even throw in some designer Dolce and Gabbana boxers and John Bartlett socks to make my traveling wardrobe entirely pretentious. Now dressing up nice and genteel is not uniquely an Asian culture custom by any means, but wearing expensive, designer apparel to every event is. Asian people always get dressed up e. Vent to a barbecue. I remember seeing this one girl at Gabriel's barbecue, Al dressed up in Gucci from head to toe. Normal why, guys can't tell one designer from another, but I knew she had on Al Gucci, because everything she wore had a damn G logo, her sunglasses, purse, even her earrings. Asian people love to show off logos, 
I'm sure designers are having a field day with all that free advertising. I know I sound like a hypocrite because I wear all this designer stuff. And unfortunately, I am. I'm still trying hard to break away from the ethnocentricity of Asian culture. And it's real why hard to break away, a special why when you just want to do the right things to please your parents. The problem is that my parents' idea of the R. I things. May not. Actual why be the R. I things. Anyway, my parents bought all this designer stuff for me, because they were sick of me wearing my nasty ass t-shirts and jeans with holes the size of Cannonball S. Plus, they love the power to control me M. Why third Asian pride theorem? They also said dressing up will help me get a good job in the future, I hope they don't real why believe their own crap. Now that I finish packing, I just say a simple G. Goodbye. To my parents, because. Remember a. Xi'an families don't hug or kiss. Mommy and daddy hand me some things to give to auntie and also, the keys to the BMW 550ii. Wonder why? Nothing better than to show. How WEL off you are, a special why to your relatives, than by pooling up in a BMW and wearing Al Hugo Boss, carrying a Louis Vuitton suitcase. I pool up to Gabriel's house, only a few blocks down the street, since he can't be seen walking to my house in ostentatious Irvine T. His shit just never ends. I honk the horn to let him know that I'm outside. I never did like to go inside Gabriel's house. There's always this small N. OT malodorous or frowsy, but very distinct and somewhat discomforting. It's not just with Gabriel's house. Most Asian homes have a point and small, it real why is an Asian thing. I don't know if it's all that damn stir-fry or incense, but the small lingers forever. I told him about it but he says he doesn't smell anything. I guess he's so immune to it since he stays home all the time. I also don't want to go inside because Gabriel's parents are relentless with their interrogation. They have this condescending way of conversing with people, a special why with me. They usual why start off by patronizingly asking, J. Onsen. Are you doing WEL in school? Which means, A. Re you maintaining a 4.0 or are you failing? They would then ask, D. Oh you plan to go to medical school after you graduate? Which real why means, D. Oh you plan to sit around doing nothing all day if you don't go to medical school? Final why, they would say, Joe. Rutan is so smart to get into Stanford. We know she'll do WEL. After she graduates, which ultimately means, Joe. Rutan is better than you and you're a loser. Compared to her. It's no wonder that my parents and Gabriel's parents are such good friends f. RP's in the same, damn Asian pod. Gabriel rushes out the front door, as if a mob is chasing him with torches and pitchforks. I notice that he's only carrying a small backpack. That's the thing with Gabriel, he always packs light wherever he goes. He says that Japanese people like to keep things simple and compact. I think he's just pretty damn lazy. As Gabriel opens my car door, he throws a bag of weed into my lap M. Why Angel from Heaven? By the way, thanks for coming. I real why didn't know if you had a purpose in life, but now I know it's to ride shotgun, so that we can get into the HOV, I say jokingly, just to annoy him like a true best friend. Sure, no problem. But I thought my purpose in life was to satisfy your mom, Gabriel replies, a supercilious smile on his face. He's always been good with comebacks. Yeah, that's real why original. I've always been awful with comebacks. Nothing original about satisfying your mom. Everyone's doing it. See what I mean? Gabriel's a natural. Okay, okay. You win. Let's get going or else we'll get stuck in traffic. The drive from Irvine to Palo Alto is about 6 hours. I usual why take the 101 freeway, but I'll take the 5 interstate this time, 
since I'm not too anxious to get to Auntie's place. Besides, Gabriel and I are toking up so I shouldn't be driving fast. Orange County Cops I. Mean pigs. Love to pull you over for the smallest offense, even for driving one mile under the speed limit, that's when they get you for the big crimes like DUI. Gabriel got sent to jail once for a DUI, because the arresting female officer small ed pot on him, even though he wasn't smoking anything, Gabriel just happened to be wearing a dirty shirt, possibly stained with pot residue. It was only his first offense, but they still held him in prison for a week. I didn't have enough money to bail him out since the court purposely brought his charges up to a felony status, and his bail jumped up to the cost of a new BMW. Plus, he didn't want his parents to know so he stuck it out for a week in the OC concentration camp. Gabriel gave his parents the excuse that he decided to go upstate for a week in order to check out some medical school programs p. You're genius. Gabriel's true talent is knowing. How to bullshit. Anyway, to get released, Gabriel gladly agreed to the plea bargain of a misdemeanor conviction, accompanied with informal probation, but they still wouldn't let him out of jail. They kept him there the whole night, even after he signed the plea bargain. He told me that the reason they keep you there is because they don't want co. Envicts. And H. Good lums. Walking. The streets of Irvine. Instead, they let you out late at night, at a godforsaken hour, in the middle of nowhere, so that no one can see you when you leave. Remember how I told you that people don't walk in ostentatious Irvine? That's because they all probably think that you just got out of jail. Irvine is trying so desperately to keep their little suburban utopia intact, that they all do anything, like violate your constitutional rights. That's why Gabriel's so anal retentive about my driving, even though I'm a damn good driver, unlike most Asians. He's always checking things to make sure we don't get pool ed over, the seat belts, the side mirrors, and right now, the passenger side airbag. By the way, Gabriel says that smoking pot in the car is total why okay, since he believes that the medicinal properties of marijuana actual why help ease and relieve the stresses of driving tea. Hat sounds good enough to me so let's toke up. Gabriel analyzes the passenger side airbag with obsessive compulsive hands, as if he's an inspection agent. W. Hi is the airbag on my side so small? It's like the size of a Game Boy, Gabriel asks. He's the type of person that demands an answer to all of his stupid questions. I. Tease the new superficial airbag which protects the most important part, the face. I. Retort, like a smart ass. A. As long as the face is protected, cause the body doesn't real why matter. We all know how important faces are here in LA. If he likes stupid questions, then I'll give him stupid answers. Gabriel turns his head and gives me a smile. Why? Oh you reactual why funny for once. Johnson. I smile back. It's always fun driving with Gabriel. I still remember the time when we first met. It was all the way back in elementary school. His parents moved here from Japan to start a furniture business, and he didn't speak much English when he got here. Actual why? He didn't speak any English at all, now that I think about it. I had to show him around school and take him everywhere. I actual why didn't like him at first because he was a fob, seriously fresh off the boat. But we got along and we ended up hanging out a lot. I would always go over to his house to play Nintendo. Back then, the Japanese had the newest games to hit the market. So Gabriel made a lot of new friends in no time because of that Nintendo. He was funny as a kid, too, and even made fun of himself for being a foreigner. That's the thing about Gabriel, he's always up for a laugh. But I hate it whenever he makes fun of me for not being able to speak my native language, since I was born here in California. I keep telling him that the reason I can't speak my native language is because my parents never taught it to me. And the reason that they never taught it to me is because they're afraid that if I had any hint of a foreign accent, then I wouldn't be able to get a good job. 
he says that's stupid and I total why agree with him. In fact, most Asians born in America can't speak their native language, because their parents are so scared of an accent ruining their chances of becoming a doctor or lawyer. And you already know why Asian parents want their kids to become doctors and lawyers. Asian parents are even willing to sell out their own culture and relegate their native language, al in the name of money. D. Yud. How come you never look at your side mirror whenever you're driving? Gabriel suddenly remarks, as I start to change lanes without checking my mirror. He's still in inspection agent mode. I decide on another smart ass thing to say to him. S. IDE mirrors are overrated. It's Al. Hype. I think that's smart ass enough eh? T least stupid enough. Gabriel gives me a bizarre smirk. Oh. Overrated? It's a safety device, you idiot. I can tell. Gabriel is a little annoyed. N. Ah. Uh, Side mirrors real why are overrated, I say to him, continuing to smile. D. Auntie worry. About it? I. Am not worried about it. I'm just slightly concerned. We both laugh. Then Gabriel slaps my right arm and says, why? Oh you know, Johnson, I was thinking about how you're the one. That's overrated. But then I realized that in order to be overrated, you actual Y have to be rated first, which you're not, not even a tiny blip on the radar. I know you're a huge blip on the GDAR. I rebut, hoping that he would stop his nonsense. I take it back about you being funny. Gabriel slouches in the passenger seat and looks out the window. I want to annoy him some more since that's what a best friend's for. H. E. Y. Man. Why? Don't you ever shave? You always have that nasty, thick beard. I don't want people to think I'm hanging out with a homeless person. That should annoy him for sure. I. D. Worry more about the way you look, Johnson. You always have that short, spiky, one-dimensional, bedhead haircut, just like every damn Asian guy. He's right, I do have that. S.H. Ort, spiky, one-dimensional, bedhead haircut, just like every damn Asian guy. M. Why mom pays for my haircuts, so I can't real why grow it out, I say, hesitantly. M. Oh me this and mommy that. Gabriel responds cynical why. Why. Oh you have to break out of that typical Asian guy mold. Grow your hair out, stop wearing that Abercrombie and Banana Republic crap, and maybe go to a regular restaurant instead of those in Chinatown or Koreatown. He's right again, a special why about the last part. I do admit that I'm always eating at a Chinese restaurant, or eating at a Korean restaurant, or eating at a Japanese restaurant. That's the thing about Asian restaurants. They all congregate together to form a Chinatown, Koreatown, or a Japantown. And it's interesting that I've never heard of an Iraq town or an Australia town or any other town for that matter. The reason is because Asian people are fearful why insecure, they don't think they can get any business, unless it has an Asian theme like Chinatown, Koreatown, or Japantown. They can't be unique so they have to share the same archetypal and cultural theme for their stores. They figure that they can make big money huddled up in a theme town A. Ka Asia Town V. Ersus being unique and different by. Going independent. Why be a pauper fish in a big pond when you can be a kingfish in a small pond? It's always about the money. W. Hat's wrong with being Asian. I ask Gabriel, musingly. T. Here's nothing wrong with being Asian. Gabriel replies adamantly. T. Here is. However, such a thing as being too Asian. You live here in America, bro. A multicultural country. Living with just Asian culture is too one-dimensional, like your damn hair. He's. Actual why write about being too Asian. 
I real why do need to change but that's easier said than done. Gabriel's also right about how t. Here's nothing wrong with being Asian. There's also nothing wrong with practicing Asian customs, as WEL as appreciating Asian culture. But the problem with Asians is that they don't wish to appreciate other cultures, they have an ethnocentric view that Asian culture is better than every other culture, ethnocentricity is another reason why Asians congregate together in Asia towns. I see so many Asians with a Xi'an pride stickers on their vehicles and a Xi'an power tattoos on their bodies. They think that they are better, but in fact, they're not. No culture is better than any other culture, just as no person is better than any other person. Perhaps Asians forgot to read the Declaration of Independence, which states, A. L. Men are created equal. I guess they didn't bother to read it since they only came to America for the opportunity to make lots of money, not for freedom or equality. In New York City, for instance, many Chinese people live in Chinatown and stay there for the majority of their lives, without even stepping outside once. They may say that the reason they only stay in Chinatown is because they don't speak English WEL enough to leave, but there are many non-profit organizations and schools that teach English for free, even at the student's residence for convenience. The truth is that many Chinese people don't want to learn English, because they don't want to assimilate. In other words, they think that their culture is the best e. No centricity a. And e that other cultures are inferior, particularly American. Culture. So why do they live in America then? Remember what I said about how Asians move to America, not for freedom, liberty, or patriotism. It's always about the money. As Gabriel mentioned, America is a multicultural country, a country full of different cultures, with the appreciation of different cultures. Asians can learn a lot just by appreciating and understanding other cultures, instead of keeping their false ethnocentric view that Asian culture is the best. G. Abriel. I'll grow out my hair if you shave your nasty beard. I say to him, proceeding. To make a deal. I know he'll be more than happy to oblige. Why? Oh you got it, Johnson. Anything to help your social life. Now that's something I real why need help with. It's embarrassing to tell you this, but I've never had a girlfriend. W-E-L, not a real girlfriend anyway. I've been out with girls and made out with a few but never anything long term. There's no way to have a girlfriend with all this pressure from my parents. Plus, Asian parents are very strict when it comes to dating. They don't want us doing it, until at least we graduate from high school. Some don't even want their kids to date until after COLH. Anyway, I won't have time for a girlfriend after I graduate from UCI because I'll be going to medical school right after that. And medical school will be even much more stressful so I'll have no time to do anything else but study. It's funny that the road to a successful career means death to your social life. Maybe I should just get neutered like our German Shepherd since he never has anything to worry about, except fetching the paper and taking a walk in the park, which reminds me of something that I've been waiting to tell you. I was walking my dog a week or so ago in the park right by my old high school. I noticed a new, chrome-plated drinking fountain installed near the entrance of the gazebo. As I walked towards it, I could see three separate spouts, one at the top for adults, one in the middle for kids, and to my amazement, one at the very bottom for dogs. There was even a cute, little push pedal so that you wouldn't have to bend down and strain yourself laboriously since, Heaven forbid, Irvine residents can't be caught looking like a day laborer. Isn't this just unbelievable? Dogs even get their own drinking fountains. I wonder what people in third world countries would say about this. Right as I was about to leave the park, a snarly, hefty golden retriever ran past me without a leash -o. Or even an owner. I noticed a copious number of dog tags around the neck so I knew it wasn't a stray. Then a car drove past me, with a young woman sticking her right arm outside the passenger window, 
waving a cane back and forth briskly. I thought it was strange that the car and the dog were both parallel, side by side, going down the street. I then realized that the woman was walking her dog in her car. Oh, for crying out loud? Has it real why come to this? Irvine residents can't even walk their dogs by feet now, they have to do it by car. Isn't this just unbelievable? All of the sudden, the low fuel indicator light comes on as I'm driving, so I start looking for a gas station. I didn't fill up before the trip since I'm real why in no hurry to get to Palo Alto, I'm real why not. I'm going to take my sweet ass time since I know auntie's preparing to unload non-stop criticism about me all weekend long. Sometimes, I wish I didn't have Asian relatives, sometimes, I wish I wasn't Asian. 4. I've been driving for several miles without seeing a single gas station, as the scenic route starts to become a little too scenic, with all the expansive farms and endless acres of apple orchards. I take the nearest exit, in order to find something eh? Nothing. I end up finding a gas station at the end of a narrow, dirt road. It's so shabby and derelict to the point that it almost fools me into thinking that it real why is abandoned. Nonetheless, with the limited O. Or rather only. CH. Voice at hand, I pull into the gas station. Now I'm not trying to be a prude or anything but this gas station is real why run down, I mean real why run down. There's only one pump in the entire gas station, for crying out loud. And this one pump doesn't take credit cards so I'm going to have to go inside to pay with cash. Gabriel and I both need to take a bathroom break anyway and a little rest will do us some good. As we enter the store of the gas station, we can't help but notice along the wall s are rows of mounted deer, bear, and fox heads, as WEL as a multifarious assortment of small ER, taxidermic animals. For a moment, we're thinking that we're inside a hunting lodge. But then we remember that we are Asian and Asian people don't do hunting lodges. We continue our way to the bathroom. After we're done, we walk to the front to pick up some potato chips, beef jerky, a couple of organic green teas m. Yuk to our surprise that a rundown, derelict gas station would offer such an esoteric flavor a sports I illustrated, and a maxim for our sexual. I mean literary p. Aerosol. Gabriel is busy perusing the other magazines so I go up to the register to pay for our stuff. The cashier, himself, is just as rundown and derelict as the gas station. He's wearing a dark blue, mechanics jumpsuit, heavily stained with motor oil and a multitude of other greasy crap. His stitch labeled name tag reads Bob and I think to myself, he forgot to put B-I-L-Y in front of it. He real Y does look like a B-I-L-Y Bob with his dark tobacco stained teeth, crooked thick rimmed glasses and a beat up, red Marlboro cap with a Vietnam vet button. You can tell that this guy thinks incest is best. I'm nice to everyone, as far as first introductions go, so I say H. L.O. To the guy, and he. Just looks at me with his strange, beady eyes, not saying a word. For a second there, I think that he may be deaf, but he final Y murmurs back with H. L.O. as W.E.L. Then he asks, I. S.N.T. There's some rice you should be picking. So there are rednecks in California after Al. I look straight at him, unaffected with poise. I. SNT there's some cousin you should be. Banging. B-I-L-Y Bob starts laughing, as if we're old chums sharing dirty jokes from high school. I guess he doesn't realize that he just got owned. S. E, -e here, Chinaman. I'm just yanking your chain. F. First of all, I'm not from China, B-I-L-Y Bob. It's certainly alright if you want to be racist, since all Americans have the right to believe whatever they want. But at least get your shit straight. Besides, the war's been over for a long time and Charlie ain't coming to get you anymore, so no need to attack every slant eye that you see. Damn it feels good to set him. Straight. 
BILY Bob doesn't reply back, obviously because he just got put in his place. I finish paying for our stuff so Gabriel and I head back to the car. I tell him about what just happened and natural why, he gets all fired up. D. You'd. Let's kick his hill BILYS. That is seriously messed up, Gabriel screams, as we drive onto the highway. T. Earn back around and I'll revenge Hiroshima on his cracker ass. I start snickering at his remark. C. Oman, man. Turn back around. Gabriel insists effusively. I can understand Japanese revenge, but two wrongs don't make a right. Besides, BILY Bob had nothing to do with World War II, and one real why don't feel like calling my parents to bail me out of jail, with the explanation that we had to beat up a gas station attendant. In retrospect, it would have felt pretty damn good to kick that redneck's ass, but ignorant people like him aren't worth the effort. This incident reminds me of an article that I read in the newspaper a few months ago, about a group of teenage skinheads that spray-painted swastikas on neighborhood cars in the middle of the night. Only they spray-painted the Nazi swastika symbol backwards, which incidental why means the Buddhist symbol for love and compassion. Like I said before, I real why have no problems which racists because they have the right to believe whatever they want, they just need to get their shit straight. Hell, I'll even help them spray-paint the Nazi swastika just so I can teach them how to do it right. Ignorant people like BILY Bob are a dime a dozen. I'm just glad that I don't let stuff like this get to me. In fact, I'm kind of glad it happened, it made me feel glad to be Asian for the first time in a long time. The only thing is that I can't remember if there ever was a time before this. 5. I start to fall asleep at the wheel since the drive up is taking its toll on me, so I'm going to let Gabriel drive for a bit. I real why don't want to let him drive, since he's a madman behind the wheel. However, he's a special and unique kind of madman because he stays quiet, while other drivers experience road rage and yell bloody murder in order to raise hell on earth. But even quiet people can be dangerous eh? And deadly. I remember when we were driving one night to a club in LA. We had to get there before 10 o'clock or else we would have to pay the cover charge. Gabriel drives the Subaru Impreza WRX, because he thinks he's a goddamn racer like every Asian guy in California. So anyway, he was driving like a bat out of hell, bobbing and weaving in traffic, talking on his cell phone with his left hand, eating a burger with his right hand and even shaving with an electric razor a L at the same time. I should have thrown him three BALS just to see him juggle a T least. Get some entertainment before we crash and die. I would love to make a bet with any thrill seeker or extreme sports fanatic that they would not be able to last for more than a minute in the passenger seat with Gabriel driving. I've talked to him so many times about the way he drives, but he says that he knows what he's doing and that he's a safe driver. He even claims that the other drivers on the road are the problem, that their driving is too defensive. His theory is that they've taken too many defensive driving courses, so there's too much defense on the road and there needs to be a little more events, like in football. Gabriel's theory is that his offensive driving will balance out all the defensive driving, thus, neutralizing any problem and making everything okay. Theories like his make me wonder why I even bother hanging out with him. H. E. Y. Johnson. Let's go up to San Fran. I know this place where we can score some pretty good weed, Gabriel exhorts, almost on the edge of begging. W. He don't have time to visit San Francisco since I'll be ass kissing my aunt the entire weekend. No to self, get some lip balm. D. You'd, we have to have some fun. We can't just hang out with your aunt the entire weekend. Gabriel's right. We real why need to have some fun. And I can think of only one thing that all Asian guys love to do for fun besides being fake race car drivers. Why? Oh you up for a little street fighter, Gabriel? I ask with a simper. H. L yeah. Let's do it. Gabriel shouts at the top of his lungs. 
I know exactly what to say, to get him all hot and bothered. For those of you that are not cognizant of Street Fighter, it's a video game that started out in the late 80s to become the greatest fighting game of all time eh? And that's a fact. There. Are numerous international competitions in countries all over the world, even decades after its creation. Classics like Street Fighter will stand the test of time. I believe that the real reason Asian guys a. And D girls p. Lay Street Fighter is because most Asians real why can't fight? Everyone thinks Asian people know Kung Fu and Karate, but the truth is that most don't know shit. Asians spend all of their time studying, reading books and hiding behind a suit and tie, so they have no time to practice martial arts. Plus, Asian people are general why small, so they typical why gang up on people. If you ever go to a club and mess with one Asian guy, a hundredfold will jump out of nowhere to help, like ninjas from the darkness of the night. G. Abriel. I shout out loud, as the car traverses into the other lane. I can't believe I'm letting him drive. S. Ori, Johnson. I wasn't paying attention. No shit, I think to myself. But why should I? Even bother reacting? This type of driving is to be expected from a madman. I. Am just so excited to play Street Fighter. It's been so long. Gabriel exclaims with delight, like an anxious virgin on prom night. S. Oh met times I wish I could quit school and just be. A professional gamer. N. Oh way in hell. I laugh haughtily. Why? Oh you can't even beat me on my worst day. W. ELC about that, Gabriel retorts adamantly. Ju. ST wait and see how badly I hoop up on you. Regardless of who is the winner, we're both ultimately losers, because we live vicariously through a video game. Gabriel and I real why need to get ourselves a life. As we make our way up to San Jose, I can't help but to notice the copious number of new houses and buildings all along the freeway, with huge banner signs posting free rent. And new homes, all across the city landscape. It's only been about a year since my last visit, but in my absence, it seems that there's a meteoric rise of suburban sprawl that is now infecting the Bay Area like a contagious disease. T. Hey rebuilding all these new condos downtown. Gabriel says, noticing the awe in. My eyes. A. All these yuppies are looking for a piece of the action. I swear, it's like they've all jumped on the condo bandwagon. We final why make it to Golfland, a family fun center with miniature golf, but more importantly, an arcade showcasing the best Street Fighter players in the world, most from the city of Sunnyvale, which is about half an hour from Auntie's house N. OT too close and just far. Enough away. Gabriel heads straight for the change machine while I venture to the gaming area to scout out the competition. Much to my dismay, no one is there. I guess all the Asians are out racing. Gabriel sees the bleak emptiness of the arcade room and frowns with lament, as if his childhood pet recently passed away. Notwithstanding the absence of the best Street Fighter players in the world, we both play each other, with much fun and excitement. It's good to relax, unwind, and forget about things, even for just a few hours. I then realize that we have to get going or else we'd miss dinner, and Auntie would love nothing more than to scold me to no end and then telling my parents of course. I haul ass out of the arcade, as I grab Gabriel by the arm. I was hooping you long time. Gabriel jokes, strutting, and prancing. F O Shizo. F O Shizo. I remark with astonishment. S. Ince when did you turn black? O. H. Calm down, fool. Gabriel Cool Y replies. D. Auntie be a sore loser. I. D rather be a sore loser than be a fake black haints like you. I real Y don't have a problem with Ebonix, the idiomatic African American slang of our generation. I just wish that words such as fat and scared wouldn't be turned into fat and scared. 
It's astounding to me that monosyllabic words can actual why be made more complicated, with the needless change in spelling. And if that's not bad enough, there's a rapper that goes by the moniker, 50 Cent. They can't even spell their own name right? Many people are avidly concerned about the increase in violence, drug use, and sexual paraphernalia in our generation, I'm more concerned with the horrific spelling and grammar. Fat and skirt account for the reasons why most young Americans can't even locate the United States of America on a map. That's why I'm almost livid with Gabriel speaking Ebonix. Eh. Hey. Right, alright. Let's just drop it, Johnson, Gabriel peaceful why amends. N. A reason to. Get your panties in a bunch. I decide to let that remark slide since I real why I'm sore that Gabriel beat me so many times in Street Fighter. Of course, my pride won't allow me to admit this, sure enough, or even accept this. Besides, I have to put on my game face when I see Auntie, and I can't look all whiny and grumpy. I ask Gabriel for my keys so that there's no chance of Auntie catching him behind the wheel or else she would tattletale to my parents, with consequences of my slow torture and death. While passing through the neighborhoods of Palo Alto, I can't help but to notice how the scenery is somewhat similar to Irvine, except much more venerable with a veneer of Spanish and Italian flair, houses with straight barrel mission, clay tile roofs M. A famous by. The neighboring Stanford University tall birch and cottonwood trees across wide, verdant yards, teeming with spaciously rectangular gardens of every flower of every color J. UST like in Irvine. Auntie lives right next to Stanford in one of the opulent houses along University Avenue in Palo Alto. Not too long ago, she actual Y used to live in East Palo Alto, the alter ego of the affluent Palo Alto, since it consists mostly of Latinos and African Americans and not its rich, snobby counterpart. It's truly amazing how East Palo Alto is right next door, shares the same area and zip codes and even some of the main streets, but by adding the word East, it then turns into the ugly stepchild ghetto. If you've ever seen the U.S. Mexico border from atop a building, then you all know what I'm talking about d. Different as night and day. The drive to Auntie's house is relatively short, as I pull into the driveway and park the BMW there so that everybody can see it, per my parents' instructions g. OT to show off to the neighbors, remember. I march up the front walkway, stepping over a myriad of shoes and sandals outside the doorway of her house. You can always tell if an Asian family lives at a certain house, just by the copious number of shoes and sandals in the doorway. I press the doorbell and Auntie opens the door, supplying me with an endearing pat on the back and nothing for Gabriel, most people don't like him and the rest, hate him. Of course, I'm only joking e. Except for my family, they real why do hate Gabriel. Auntie's house is still as I remember it, traditional and passé with antiquated oriental cabinets, tables, and chairs. Lanterns, small and large, hang from the ceiling. Red New Year couplets, for good luck, stream the wall s, along with a myriad of bamboo wall scrawl s written in ancient calligraphy t. Epical inside an Asian house. Of course, a calendar with the zodiac, for good fortune, is hanging on the kitchen wall for Al to CJ. UST like at my house except that. Ante displays a total of seven. A new item that instantly grabs my attention is a recent picture of Auntie and Darcy, her son, and my oldest cousin, sitting up above the fireplace of the living room. My uncle passed away a long time ago before Auntie moved to America, or else he'd be in the picture, too. It may just be me, but it seems like Darcy is frowning next to Auntie in the picture. Before stepping into the living room, I careful why and punctiliously take off my shoes and place them outside the doorway. Gabriel does the same without the slightest of a hint because all Asian people know this tradition, take off your shoes before you walk inside a house. What most people don't know is that this tradition has nothing to do with respect and courtesy, but instead, has everything to do with the Asian obsessive desire to keep carpet from getting dirty. Long ago, 
it was actual why considered common decency to step into an Asian family's home with shoes on. There's even an old superstition about how wearing shoes inside a house will protect the guests from ghosts entering through the solace of their feet I. N. Other. Words, protect the soul by protecting the soul. Surprisingly, with a sprinkle of sarcasm, once carpet was created, they decided to invent a new tradition of taking off your shoes outside a house. If you don't believe me, then go inside an Asian person's house, and you'll see their best furniture covered in plastic. Furniture is meant for sitting, but for Asians, it's meant for showcasing. The plastic is to keep their furnishings from getting dirty, just like shoes are kept outside to keep the carpet from getting dirty. It has nothing to do with respect and courtesy and everything to do with Asian indolence and fastidiousness to keeping things clean. Auntie brings into the living room a tea tray, a porcelain teapot on a trivet, and a superfluous number of teacups. It's tradition, even for the younger generation, to drink tea inside an Asian household. As we sit down, Auntie asks Gabriel a series of questions, what medical school do you plan to attend? How are your parents doing? Do you still live near Johnson? T. Has questions appear to be innocuous, but I assure you that they are not. Asians love to say things in subtext mode, which is an expression for saying one thing and meaning something entirely different. For example, a girl might say to another girl, T. Hat's a nice dress. But real why mean? T. Hat's so dreadful. Why would you wear that? So if I translate what auntie's real why asking, her series of questions would be the following, what medical school would accept a loser like you? Are your parents still in debt? Are you still living in the rich part of Irvine or the poorer section? Likewise, people enjoy asking the proverbial W. Hat do you do, N. O. T. because they. Real why care about what you do, but to size you up and see if you're worth talking to. Many people have asked me this question and don't seem to be interested in the fact that I'm a pathetic col edge student B. I.G. surprise. But whenever they ask this question to Darcy, who happens to be an obstetrician and gynecologist, they are immediately suffused with admiration, and their attention couldn't be drawn away by a circus of clowns twirling kittens tied to dynamite thrown through a ring of fire. One word from J.D. Salinger the catcher in the rye pretty much sums up how people real why are, p. Honey. Auntie doesn't ask me any questions because my mom has already gossiped to her behind my back about what a complete loser that I am, I consider myself lucky so that she doesn't waste any of my time. This is why I don't visit her as often as my parents would like me to. After Auntie's interrogation is over, we take our bags and head upstairs to go unpack. I'm staying in the guest room with Gabriel, since I don't want to stay in Darcy's room, even though he's in England for a medical conference. There's nothing wrong with his room, it's just that I don't real why like him. Don't get me wrong. My oldest cousin is a nice guy, but he always brags about his accomplishments. He's an only child, for starters, so he's spoiled right off the bat. Not to mention the fact that he always got straight A's from grade school all the way through C.O.L. Edge, graduating from Harvard and receiving his M.D. with honors from John Hopkins Medical School. He's also on the top of the list as the best obstetrician and gynecologist in Northern California, or Norkel for short. Plus, his wife is a former beauty queen from Sacramento. Yes, I'm jealous W. Ho wouldn't be? The only noticeable weakness of Darcy is his name. He got picked on constantly as a kid and has been ridiculed by many a classmate to no end. I got picked on, too, since my first name is a last name but not nearly as bad as Darcy. Asian parents enjoy giving their kids very American names like Darcy, Johnson, Chichil, hell, I even knew a kid named Andy Mayan, I wonder if he's still alive because no sane person would ever be able to make it past elementary school with a name like Andy Mayan. The reason that Asian parents give their kids very American names is simply based on their misconceived notion that it's an advantage for getting a good job. 
they think that having a very American name would be more appealing, thus, hireable, instead of a less American name, aka an Asian name. That's why Gabriel's parents gave him a very American name. The same reason that my parents gave me my name. Anyway, trust me when I say that M. Or. Appealing. And H. Irable is absolutely not worth the many years of belittling and suffering that plenty of Asians have endured for having very American names. H. E. Y. Johnson. Come look at this picture of Darcy. Gabriel shouts brusquely from across the room, picking up the photo on the bedroom drawer. H. He looks like such a dork. I have to see this for myself. A. Till Y, he looks much better than you, even with those Coke bottle glasses and that butt cut hair, I tease. I thought it was just you that's ugly. Now I know it runs in your whole family. Gabriel teases back. H. He may be ugly but you've seen his wife. She's a mighty fine piece of N. O. T. as hot as my honey Lee. Gabriel interrupts, with excitement upon mentioning her name. Honey Lee is a Korean model and a former Miss Korea, but more importantly, Gabriel's biggest infatuation and presumably every guy in Korea. What I don't get is why her name is Honey. She might as well have the name, Sugar Lee, so it sounds like sugary, then she can be put in Kool-Aid or chocolate cake. And with a name like Honey, she may as well be a stripper and work the pole, because no one's going to take her seriously. The thing with people in Asia is that they love to give themselves ridiculous English names. I remember a missionary from my church that told me the names of several kids in villages all across China, Kobe Chang, Shak Huang, Pokemon Ma, and a multifarious mockery of other names, including the worst of them all, American Idol Wang. One of the boys actual Y has the first name, American Idol. I couldn't help but laugh my ass off. No wonder Americans make fun of Asian foreigners, I would too. Gee. Abriel, your little honey Lee ain't all that. Oh. H you're just jealous because she's hotter than your Emily. Gabriel teases. Displaying a stupid smile that I would love to smack right off his face. I. Wish she was my Emily, I say, dejectedly. Damn I wish she was mine. Let me tell you that she's absolutely stunning in every way, tall, thin, and statuesque. Her eyes are wide, but nicely shaped, and wait. I've already told you about Emily, haven't I? I real why need to snap out of it? An unexpected knock comes at my door. The door opens even before I can say see. Oh. In L. Ike daddy, like auntie. Why? Oh you need go to sleep now. You two go to bed. Church tomorrow. Wake up early. Auntie slams my door, just as violently as daddy, I guess the both of them went to the same parenting boot camp. Gabriel is used to my parents' austere behavior so he doesn't even bother commenting about auntie. I remember when I was a kid, going to Disneyland with my parents' friends and their children. My parents had to go out of town that weekend on a business trip so one of the parents W. Ho's name I've forgotten long ago a. Eh? Announced proudly and confidently to my. Dad, I. F. Johnson bad, don't worry. I will spank him like he my own son. Truth be told, I wasn't as scared as I was pissed. Who does this guy think he is? What gives him the right to discipline me? Gabriel told me that this happened to him before as WEL when he was a kid in Japan. So I guess Asian parents like to beat up on other kids as WEL as their own children. Why don't they pick on someone their own size, instead of hurting defenseless, innocent, little children? I guess the reason is because they're real white cowards, just like cops. Yeah, that's right, cops. Cops love to abuse their power. Many of them are dropouts with an authority complex, beaten up one too many times in high school, so now they think that it's their turn to pick on people. 
only they pick on the defenseless J. UST like Asian parents and dast arts. It's not real why their fault, though, I read a news article once about the instituted police policy of AM. Aximum intelligence standard. For new officers, meaning that if you're smart, you can't be a cop, and if you're dumb as a rock, welcome. The M. Aximum intelligence. Standard. Is set at an IQ of around 99, which is a little below average. They like them dumb enough not to question the law, but just smart enough to know how to shoot and taste the hell out of innocent people. This reminds me of a bumper sticker that I saw not too long ago, that read, to protect and to serve, to assault and to tez. I love wordplay, a special why when it's true. Anyway, if you don't believe that there's a M. Aximum intelligence standard. Just Google. It. That's what I did when Gabriel first told me. And you and I both know that Gabriel is full of it, so you always have to double check whenever he tell us you something. I'm still not done talking about cops. Cops these days remind me of the mindless high school football player N. OT that football players are mindless, just as a cliche. ND they only know how to do one thing and nothing else, take orders. Like in Seattle, when a cop tossed a pregnant woman because she wouldn't get out of her car fast enough M. I be because she's freaking pregnant and can't move very fast, officer. How about the time cops tossed a wheelchair-bound woman to death in Florida? Or how about the time a cop started beating up a teenage girl and boy in an Arkansas park just for skateboarding? See. Ops gone wild. Pretty. Much sums it up. Of course, cops would always use the same excuse in their hapless defense, s. You're. We're the bad guys, until of course, you need us, then we help you out regardless of what you think of us. What a crock. What do they mean we need them? They need us, we pay their salaries. They need us because they are supposed to serve us. Police officers swore an oath with Bonti. Oh protect and to serve. It's interesting that I. See that slogan. T. Oh protect and to serve E. Very where that I go. Whom are they real why? Protecting and serving? I bet you didn't know that a big percentage of law enforcement officers are contractors, aka corporate police. If you go to your local courthouse, airport, even the trolley Y station in San Diego, you'll notice these uh, officers. With a corporate logo versus a regular police logo. So T. O protect and to serve. Is short for T. O protect and to serve. Corporations. My apology for going on a diatribe again, I just get all fired up whenever I hear of hypocrisy, discrimination, and bigotry. Speaking of which, I have church in the morning. 6. It's a beautiful morning, as I stare outside the bedroom window. I can hardly see anybody outside, I'm sure everyone's getting ready for mandatory Sunday morning church service. Gabriel is still sleeping B. IG surprise so. I decide to get ready by brushing my teeth, taking a shower, fixing my hair and putting on my new parental purchased Hugo Boss dress shirt with matching pants, so that I look prim and proper like a good Asian and represent SH. Bow off. My family's status. I walk down to the kitchen to see that Auntie is ready as WEL. There's a disgusted look in her eyes as I pass her to get some milk out of the fridge. It can't be because of me, since I'm all dressed up and ready to go to church, so it must be because of Gabriel, who's still sleeping. I decide to skip breakfast altogether and rush upstairs to wake Gabriel up. L. Leave me alone. Gabriel pleads, as he buries his head under the pillow. He pulls the comforter over himself to form an impenetrable fortress of fluffy cotton. D. You'd, we have to go to church. Auntie's already pissed at you for sleeping so late. I. Real why don't care about what Auntie thinks, but I do care about what she'll tell my parents. A. 
All right, all right. I'm getting up. By the way, I was dreaming about Emily, my noble love, Gabriel mutters with a pestering tone. I grab his pillow and proceed to beat him with it. He laughs and nearly trips over the bedroom rug, as he runs into the bathroom. I'm laughing, too, because he's completely naked. After Gabriel finishes getting ready, in a record time of only two hours, alongside another record of Auntie complaining just once, we pack in my car and drive to Auntie's new church, Unity Mission Church of Christ. Unity Mission Church looks like a giant stadium, tall beaming steel structures supporting double reinforced concrete wall s, stained glass windows the size of truck bays, massive marble columns shouldering the mirrored ceiling of the church entrance a. ND featuring from the inside, a full Y equipped, Olympic size swimming pool plus spa, an arcade, a car care center, a complete fitness center that could rival 24 hour fitness and even a Starbucks inside for all your caffeinated, praying needs. This is a typical mega church, the result of too many snobby people with too much money. It's interesting that this is supposed to be a church of Christ, the same Christ that preached against the sins of greed and avarice. The church members of Unity Mission probably missed that particular sermon. I think about all the poor, starving children around the world as we walk through the church parking lot, which is full of luxury cars, BMWs, Mercedes-Benz convertibles, Lexus sedans, among many others. Consider WWJD, what would Jesus drive? I know he wouldn't drive any of those cars. I guess Unity Mission Church members don't practice what Jesus preaches. Gabriel points his finger at the cross near the top of the roof to show me how miniature it is in comparison to the entire mega church. Upon entering the main entrance, we see a vast sea of people, hundreds waiting in separate lines and many in groups of circles. It takes some time, but we final why make our way into the sanctuary. The inside of the sanctuary is even more impressive, like a grand concert hall, bright lights shining from above the mile-high ceiling, rows of pews cascading down like a torrential river flowing to the bottom, screens literal Y as big as those in a movie theater hanging high above, and at the top of the chancel, a sound system with a speaker as wide as a football field and just as expensive, too, from Auntie's explanation. We sit in the nosebleed section of the mega church way in the back, as the front and middle sections are already full. I find it surprising that there aren't any event ushers to check our tickets just joking, of course. Auntie recognizes a friend over in the next pew so she gets up to talk to her. Gabriel and I sit there silently and awkwardly, not knowing anyone. Once the sermon starts, I notice a number of cameras at the center of the nave. Apparently, this church service is a live televised, broadcasting all over the Bay Area. I'm guessing I can't sleep through service, like I usual why do? I'll probably have to babysit Gabriel and keep him from snoring too loud. Speaking of which, he's already starting to doze off W. Hi. The hell did I bring Gabriel? When it's final why over, after about two hours of the same, monotonous stuff that I've heard since I was a child, we walk out towards the main hallway. Auntie sees some more of her friends and walks over to talk to them. I'm with Gabriel, both of us standing silently and awkwardly, just like during service, by the entranceway. All of the sudden, I notice a girl and a guy walking towards us. As they come closer, I realize that I recognize that girl, Emily. What's she doing here in Palo Alto? My heart starts pounding fast as I begin to fix my hair, suavely of course. I rub my eyes and nose to make sure that there's nothing nasty visible. I know my breath is okay since I'm chewing gum, even throughout all of service earlier. Gabriel catches her eyes and says, H. E. Y. Emily. How's it going? H. I. Gabriel, I'm doing good, Emily replies. H. How about you? Gabriel and Emily use. To be friends when they were kids since their parents were in business together. I am all right. You know Johnson, right? Gabriel asks. Oh, please say why. 
Yes. Please. Say why. Yes. Why. Yes, I do. Hello, Johnson, Emily smiles with her response. All right. She knows that I exist. H. E. Y. Emily. I say smoothly, as if she's just another person off the street, even though she's the only girl that I ever think about. B. Why the way, I'd like you guys to meet Ronald. I total why forgot about the guy that she's with. Why does she have to ruin things by introducing him? H. Hello, Gabriel says politely. H. I, I add perfunctorily, as if he's real why just another person off the street. Gabriel notices my tone and immediately asks Emily, S. Oh what are you doing here in Palo Alto? I am visiting a few friends, but Ronald is from around here. He lives in San Jose. I wish he would stay there in San Jose and leave us alone. T. Hat school. Johnson and I are here to visit his auntie. Don't say a untie. Gabriel. That makes me sound like I'm a little kid. Oh. H, we were talking about you, Emily, just the other day. Damn it. Don't say that either. Why the hell did I bring Gabriel? Oh. H, what about? Emily tilts her head slightly with an inquisitive look. Joe. Aitchinson says that the two of you are in the same molecular biology class together. Oh. H, yeah, that's right. Emily confirms. W. You're also in the same lab. W. L. Johnson was saying how you're real why smart and how he real why wishes that you could tutor him. I'm real why going to stop hanging out with Gabriel A. After I kill him, of course. S. You're, no problem, Emily turns towards me and smiles, making this the perfect moment to take a picture of her beautiful, immaculate face. A. Nitime, just let me know. W. E. L. We have to get going. We're eating lunch with Ronald's parents. A. All right, see you later then. Have a safe trip back to OC. Gabriel says, as we wave. Goodbye to them. G. Abriel. What's wrong with you? I snap at him fiercely. H. E. Y. Chill, man. I'm helping you out. Now's your chance to talk to her and stop being a shy, little bitch, Gabriel urges, and you can thank me later. Oh, yeah, one more thing, I saw her a few weeks ago and told her that you liked her. Why? Oh you what? What the hell is wrong with you? I scream, causing several people to stare in our direction. R. Relax, bro. She said that you're real why cute. She wonders why you never talk to her. S. He said that. Real why. Why. E. So do you want to thank me or kill me? Gabriel asks rhetorical why, showing a. Proud, accomplished smile. Did I mention that Gabriel's my best friend and the coolest person in the entire world? I. Love you, Gabriel. You are indeed wonderful and W. 8 W. Hi didn't you tell me that? You talked to her a few weeks back. I real why I'm going to kill Gabriel. 7. I finish packing all of my clothes in my suitcase and glance over to see Gabriel's stuff all over the bed and on the floor. Auntie always complains to me about Gabriel's indolence, uncleanliness, disheveled hair, hopeless future, and the list goes on and on. Auntie's probably right about all those things, but I still love Gabriel, a special why since he got the BAL rolling for me and Emily. I can't wait to go back to Irvine. Then if I hate it there. I wonder how I should. Approach her. Maybe I should just play it cool and let her come to me. Then again, girls don't take the initiative so I'll need to make the first move. And then there's the matter with Ronald. 
she didn't say if they were dating, and I've already beaten every last detail out of Gabriel per his conversation with her a few weeks ago. I guess I'll just have to wait to find out when I get back. Now, it's time to pack up Gabriel's stuff. I owe him that much. As we make our way out the door, I give Auntie a big hug goodbye, since I know she won't initiate it. Asian culture needs to change so I'll start changing it. Gabriel waves goodbye and as he turns towards the car, I can see Auntie giving her usual look of dissatisfaction towards him. She used to give me the same look, but I guess I've been a good boy this whole weekend so she cut me some slack. I made sure I obeyed everything she said, from graduating with honors to marrying only after I've established a successful, medical practice. I also answered why. Yes to all of her rigid questions and a thing different from when I'm at home. The drive back to Irvine is unbearable, since Gabriel is teasing me relentlessly about Emily, joking about how our first date will involve dissecting frogs and making out with eye goggles on. I am letting you drive so don't push your luck. I advise Gabriel, hoping that he would shut his mouth. Why? Oh you get flustered so easily. Gabriel replies calmly. I. T's funny to see you get so. Defensive. To be honest, I don't know what you see in Emily. I mean she's pretty and Al, but that's about it. She doesn't real why have that much of a personality. A. And D this is coming from a person with no personality, I smirk. N. Oh seriously. I remember the first time I played at her house, when I was a little kid. She would rarely talk and even when she did, it was only to her dull ass. There was this one time when she got mad at me because I drew a picture for her with her name on it. W. Hi would she get mad about that? B. Because I spell Ed Emily with a Y, like how every normal person would spell Emily. I was just trying to draw her something nice, but she got mad at me for not knowing how to spell her name. W-E-L, excuse me, princess. I swear, girls with normal names that spell it differently think that they are so unique. It's not unique. It's asinine. A unique name would be Shaniqua. Spelling a normal name differently is not unique. It's Cal Edmus spelling. Gabriel. Does have a point, but I don't real why care because he's making fun of Emily. W. L, if it's just a misspelling, then I'll start spelling your name with a Y, too, just like the way it should be, Gabriel. G-A-Y-B-R. A. And I'll start spelling Johnson with S-M-A-L-L in the front. T. Hats adding an extra word, not a different way of spelling. I reply with a smart S. Tone. H. How about you shut up and put my doobie bag in my backpack? Gabriel instructs. Trying desperately to change the subject. A. Right. You know how dangerous it is to smoke pot while driving, I say jokingly. R. Remember that commercial with those guys smoking pot in the car at a drive through and then the driver's unaware of a little girl riding her bike, so he accidental Y speeds up and hits her? Oh. H, yeah. Ha ha. What a bunch of crap. Where the hell were the little girl's parents? She just came out riding in the middle of the street without even looking. That's such propaganda. I could do a commercial where those guys, instead of smoking pot, are filling out their voter registration cards, and as they are filling it out, the little girl rides her bike in front of the car, and the driver hits her. So the moral of my commercial, don't vote. Gabriel. Announces, proudly with confidence. I. Love how they demonize pot smokers even though no. One's ever died once from smoking pot, and 50,000 die each year from drinking and driving. With Gabriel's wisdom, he should definitely run for office. T. Rue, true. I assent. Who am I to disagree? B. Ut getting back to Emily, you should real why be careful of Korean girls. 
Gabriel warns, like a big brother. He's absolutely right. Here's the thing about Korean girls. Of course, most girls these days are superficial and pretentious, especially why those in Irvine and pretty much all of California. Multiply that by a hundred and you have a Korean girl. I'm not exaggerating, I'm real why not? It has a lot to do with Korean culture. Many Korean girls grew up in South Korea without much money, so all they focus on is exactly that, money, a special why at a very young age. Then they are immersed with the idea of beauty and superficiality, above all else. In fact, a large percentage of Korean girls actual why get double eyelid surgery to make their eyes bigger, that's why you can easily tell if an Asian girl is Korean or not. It's so common in Korea, that parents actual why set up a fund SI. Myler to a COL edge fund F. Or the surgery. If the family and the girl don't have the necessary funds, then the girl usual why ends up becoming a prostitute, in order to pay for the surgery, as WEL as paying for other expensive, inessential crap, I know it sounds harsh, but please hear me out. Obviously, Korean parents don't like their daughters taking up prostitution, but eventual why they accept it because they claim that I tease a part of society to keep deviants from raping and hurting others. However, it's real why because they know that prostitutes earn a tremendous amount of money, which means more than any ethical or moral issue, even if it involves their own daughters. Korean parents are certainly disappointed with their daughters becoming prostitutes, but they certainly aren't disappointed with the enormous amount of money that they make. I know it's hard to believe that so many Korean girls become prostitutes, but just ask the USCIs, United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, formerly known as INS, about the crackdown on the flood of Korean immigrants M. Most of them young, attractive. Korean girls D. During the early part of this century, these Korean girls work as young masseuses in front set up as massage parlors, or N. Aight spas. As many Johns would call them. I think that it's sad how society places such a heavy weight on beauty and money that girls have to become prostitutes just to keep up with the L. Ephes tiles of the rich and famous. As you can tell, I'm not a big fan of money. As the old adage goes, money is the root of all evil. Don't get me wrong, I use money to buy food, gas, and stuff, which is total why okay. But what's not okay is the obsession with money, to the point of going into prostitution just to get double eyelid surgery. If money and beauty aren't enough, most Korean girls have the same dream of becoming one thing, a housewife. I was surprised when a Korean friend of mine told me about this. She told me how it was her dream to have a little boy and a little girl and a house in the burbs. I asked her if that's all she wanted in life. She gave me an unequivocal yet. S. That's great if that's what she real why wanted, but I ruminated over what she said and realized that she didn't real you want to be a housewife, because a housewife actual why has to do work, ironing, cleaning up shit, feeding, cooking, cleaning up more shit, it's a job in itself. What she real why dreams about becoming isn't actual why a housewife, it's a trophy wife, where the husband provides her an endless number of credit cards for shopping, manicures, pedicures, and other luxuriating, wasteful crap. But who wouldn't want to be a trophy wife, driving around in a luxury car, wearing designer clothes, and eating at five-star restaurants? Hell, I want to be a trophy wife. I just wish she would tell me straight up, like Gabriel, who told me once, when we were kids, that all he wanted to become was a businessman, since the sole reason for the existence of Japanese men is to work. I laughed and told him that I wanted to become a businessman kill ER, since the sole reason for my existence was to end his life. He told me that I wasn't funny and now I know that he's right. Anyway, Korean girls real why mean trophy wife, not housewife. But it's not entirely the fault of Korean girls. The fault also lies with Korean men, 
specifical why in regards to a stigma that is strikingly true, Korean men are widely known as wife beaters, domineering and controlling, and their actions pervasive throughout the history of Korean culture. Korean men have furious tempers. If you don't believe me, just hang out with a Korean guy after he's had just one shot of soju, Korean vodka. Unfortunately, a lot of Korean women simply accept the stigma, which is why many of them are completely subservient to men, just like other Asian women in other Asian cultures, a special why in the old days. In fact, many ancient civilizations in Asia have words based on hierarchy, lower caste words for women and higher caste words for men. Even today, Asian women are still subservient to Asian men. But now it's turning around. You'll see a lot of Korean girls A. And D a lot of other Asian girls D. 8 non-Asian guys, such as white guys, even. Black guys, who display domineering Asian father traits. These girls date non-Asians to rebel for all those strict years of upbringing as children and to escape from the stranglehold of their Asian fathers, but ultimately, end up getting the same thing regardless of whom they date. I will say one good thing about Korean guys, they pay for everything. That's why so many Asian girls start out dating Korean guys. Hell, I would start out dating a Korean guy, too, if he pays for everything. But it's a trap. He'll buy all these expensive gifts, such as jewelry, clothes, and mobiles phones, in order to lure the girl in and once he gets her, it's over. The girl can't escape his tenacious, unyielding clutches. That's when the Korean guy proudly rips off his shirt and tie, like Clark Kent switching to Superman, to reveal his true identity and outfit, the wife beater. Of course, Korean girls aren't the only ones with issues. Many other Asian girls possess the same characteristics, particularly Vietnamese girls, and they can't seem to figure out why they end up with such shitty men. As many people know, Vietnam is a third world country, so the Vietnamese girls over there grew up very destitute. For some reason, when they emigrate to the United States of America, they suddenly think that they're above everybody, like they're hot shit. Don't ask me how this happens, ask them. They even choose to date specific Asian ethnicities by hierarchy I. Call it the A. Xi'an. Status hierarchy F. Rom lowest to highest, Laotian, Thai and the rest of Indochina, including the Vietnamese, third and second place are Korean then Chinese B. UT may interchange. Depending on whom you ask, and the top dog, Japanese. Of course, there are others, but I'll just talk about the essential ones. It's sad that there's a class system even within Asian culture. What's interesting about this Asian status hierarchy is that it's pervasive throughout all of Asian culture. What's even more interesting is that this hierarchical pattern, from lowest to highest, is the same as lowest to highest in nominal GDP a country's total income, aka money. The bottom rung of the ladder is Laotian, who coincidental why have the lowest GDP, and the top of the ladder is Japanese, who coincidental why have the highest GDP. Do you see where I'm going with this? Not only is there dating prejudice among Asian ethnicities, but there's also money prejudice, discrimination based on wealth. If you don't believe me about the Asian status hierarchy, go ask a Japanese guy's parents what they think about him marrying a Vietnamese girl versus a Japanese girl. Now that you know what I know, you won't be surprised at their answer. 8. I can't believe that I actual why feel good about being back in Irvine, after many years of loathing and misprising the city. Throughout the drive home and during dinner, plus the entire night without much sleep at all, I've been thinking about what to say to Emily. I know I'll see her in class later today. I guess I'll just have to play it cool, then again, I'm not cool, so I'll just be nice. But pretty girls hate nice. Maybe I'll just skip class today so I don't have to deal with this, but then she'll just forget about me entirely. Man, I hate worrying about this. All this pressure and there's still nothing going on between us. I guess this is romance. But then again, I read a book by the Dalai Lama, 
in which he explained that romance is an illusion and a fantasy. If you look up the word romance in the dictionary, you'll get the definitions, imaginative, fictitious, and the aforementioned fantasy. In other words, romance isn't real, just like Hollywood isn't real. I'll quote the Dalai Lama from his book, The Art of Happiness. The idealization of this romantic love can be seen as an extreme. It cannot be seen as a positive thing. It's something that is based on fantasy, unattainable. So, on that basis it cannot be seen as a positive thing. This is why the divorce rate is now over 60%, according to a friend of my parents, who happens to be a marriage attorney. Please understand that I think relationships are definitely okay, I obviously have nothing against them. But when a girl wants a guy to do everything for her or when a guy waits hand and foot for a girl, that is obsession, and as the Dalai Lama stated, it cannot be seen as a positive thing. That's why relationships fail all the time, that's why marriages fail all the time. A relationship based on genuine compassion and mutual respect is what maintains a strong relationship, not romance. So I guess I better show Emily respect first, before anything else. My early morning drive to UCI is as tedious as watching senior citizens play miniature golf, in other words boring as hell, a special why driving the same, mundane route and seeing the same, old scenery. What makes it worse is the heavy traffic, as you already know. But the good thing about getting here early is getting a great parking spot, right in front of the School of Biological Sciences. Now I have all the time in the world to plan out what to say to Emily. I'm in my first class of the day, biochemistry, feeling very tense and anxious. Time is a kill er a special why when you're waiting for the big moment. So I decide, for the very first time ever, to get out of class early just so I can go to the bathroom to freshen up, you know, to work my magic and get ready for Emily. I'm standing at the urinal d. Oing my thing. When I notice, at the corner of my eye, a guy standing right behind me, looking rather pensive and uncertain. There are a total of five urinals in the men's bathroom, with me occupying the one farthest to the left, the remaining four are empty. For you ladies out there, please understand that a guy should never stand behind you if the other urinals are empty t. Hats what we call gay. Anyway, I finish d. Oing my. Thing. And as I leave the bathroom, I see the guy immediately dashing to the center urinal, to do h his thing. I ponder for a moment about his bizarre behavior and then I realize that this guy suffers from shy bladder syndrome s. Opposedly a new disease according to a news article I read a few months ago I and which a person experiences trouble peeing when there are people around him. I can't believe this is actual why a disease. For crying out loud, AIDS is on the rise, cancer is everywhere, but we now have a more serious disease known as shy bladder syndrome. Are you kidding me? What's so shy about peeing? There's a very easy way to resolve his shy bladder syndrome and since I'm so nice, I'll help that guy out, I'll let him hold my penis while I pee, just to show him that there's nothing to be shy about. If I can do it, anyone can. Okay, maybe I won't let him hold my penis eh? Till why? Hell no I won't let him be. UT if. Shy bladder is a big problem for him, all he needs to do is drink massive amounts of water, then his body will have no choice but to pee, even with people around. Do it enough times and it'll break the mental block, like the mental block a professional baseball player experiences during a slump, in which the skill to hit is there but something is just in the way mental why. By drinking massive amounts of water over time, he'll start peeing in front of people and eventual why break the mental block. After time, he'll start peeing normal why with no more shy bladder. Who needs medical school if someone like me can start curing diseases like shy bladder syndrome? Anyway, I'll stop playing doctor since I need to get ready for my big moment, Emily. Rushing to my molecular biology class, I get there half an hour early and much to my surprise, I see Emily sitting in the back row, beautiful and captivating, 
as the clouds rip open the sky, allowing the sun to shine brilliantly with its radiance upon her heavenly presence. All right, I sound like a damn romance novel, but I can't help just standing there, silent and motionless, with a total why stunned look on my face t. He look of love. Emily looks up and smiles. H. E. Y. Johnson. Why are you just standing there by the door? I real why hope I don't blow this. I just realized that I forgot something in my car. I stammer, hoping that she didn't catch me staring. I real why hope I don't blow this. B. U. T. It's no big deal. How are you doing? I am doing good. How about you? I am doing great, now that you're here, to help me with my homework of course. I think I'm real why blowing this. Emily just smiles. I walk towards the back of the room and take the seat right next to her tea. Hats one small step for a man, one giant leap for Johnson. A. Right. Let me take a look at your homework, Emily says, as I hand her my notebook. Just so you know, I purposely missed some answers, to make it look like I real why need tutoring. Truth be told, I'm maintaining a 4.0 in the class O. Or else my parents would. Bring back the old feather duster for you know what. Emily looks over my homework, with meticulous eyes and as I expect, she points out my erroneous answers and helps me correct them. After she finishes, we start chatting a little about our past weekend in Palo Alto. D. I D you have fun hanging out with Auntie. Emily. Says, trying to keep from laughing too hard. I'm going to kill Gabriel for having such a big mouth. M. Why Aunt and I didn't do too much. We just went shopping for some things. She criticized Gabriel most of the weekend. That part I actual why liked. D. I D Gabriel tell you that we used to hang out when we were kids. It's been so long since I've spoken to him. Why? E. He told me that you stopped hanging out with him because he was a loser. And you're total why right? H. Aha. No, Gabriel's a sweetheart. I love his upbeat attitude and his disheveled hair, even his nasty beard. He's a cool guy. Why? Oh you wouldn't say that if you see the way he drives, I joke, using my humor and charm to win her over. B. Why the way, did you have fun hanging out with your boy toy, Ronald? I'm trying to find out if they're real why going out or not. I. T was okay. Ronald's parents are good friends with mine. He's been asking me out for the longest time, but I don't like him. My parents cajoled me into hanging out with him for the weekend since he knows a lot of people at Stanford Medical. I'm hoping to get in after I graduate here. This is exactly what I want to hear, I don't like him. S. Oh you two aren't going out? I ask with a little too much excitement, hoping she wouldn't pick up on this. W. Old you like it if we were going out? I. Would like it if Ronald and I were going out, I joke, catching her off guard. Oh. H real why? Why don't I arrange a date between the two of you? It would be my absolute pleasure. Emily exclaims, displaying her good sense of humor. I like a girl with a good sense of humor. T. And it would be my absolute pleasure never to talk to you again. I counter. We both. Laugh out loud, attracting several stares from those around us. Luckily, class hasn't started yet or else we'd both be asked to leave. Much to my surprise, Emily tilts her head slightly and closer towards me, her eyes locking with mine. I can sense that she's about to ask me something important. S. O. Johnson. How come we've been in the same classes since middle school, yet, this is the first time we're actual white talking? Her question catches me off guard, since I had no idea that she even knew that I existed all the way back in middle school. Hell, 
I didn't even know I existed all the way back in middle school. I am shy because girls find it endearing. I say to play it off. Emily starts laughing at my remark. W. L. Endearing or not, we should talk more. Emily says. I can't believe it. Things are real why starting to look good for me. After two hours of torture I mean lecture CL. Ass is final why over. It's now or never so I work up enough courage to ask Emily for her number. She grabs my left wrist, forming a tight grip as if she's afraid that I'll escape and writes her phone number with her Hello Kitty pen, in big loop of letters on the top of my hand. D. Auntie wash your hands. Emily instructs, A. N D U. Better Cal. She smiles with a hint of seriousness. I pull out my mobile phone from my right pocket, scrolling down to select the camera option. With the click of a button, I take a snapshot of her number on my hand. I. And the event. That my left hand gets chopped off, I can still call you with my right. I. Like a guy with a sense of humor. Anyway, I gotta get going. Do call me. Emily. Departs through the door, looking fantastic in her ass-hugging jeans. I like ass-hugging jeans co. Rection, I love ass-hugging jeans. I can't believe what just happened. I don't know how, but I think I got lucky. Actual why, I know I got lucky. How could I, a certifiable loser a. Eh? S verified by my parents and numerous. Other sources g. E.T. the phone number of literal Y the most beautiful girl at UCI. What can she possibly see in me? It can't be because of the size of my you know what because everyone knows that Asian guys are small you know where. Al jokes aside, can it be that Emily empathizes with me, sharing the same parental pressure of becoming a doctor, thus, forming a common bond altogether? Maybe I shouldn't ask so many questions and just be happy with my situation. And I should be happy that things are real why changing for me, for the better, much better than I can ever hope for. I've let my parents control me all of my life and in turn, inducing my criticism of Asian culture. It will be different now, since things are real why looking up. I'm starting to feel much better about my life. Perhaps it's not so bad to be Asian. 9. I hate grocery shopping by myself, a special why when my parents make me come here to Culver Plaza, the Chinatown of Irvine and Ergo Orange County. It's always crowded with Asian people of course, Al looking for a wide selection of cheap Asian goods. Now when I say cheap, I don't mean just the price, I also mean the quality. Many people are aware of lead toys manufactured in China, but not many are aware of cadmium laden kitchenware, which has been linked to birth defects and cancer, or chopped up pieces of bleached cardboard in frozen wantons, or contaminated, toxic pet food that has killed at a copious number of animals here in the United States, or milk and baby formula laced with melamine, a banned industrial chemical, the same chemical used in the contaminated, toxic pet food, or the extreme levels of formaldehyde n. Ormal wife for embalming dead bodies you said in clothing, and unbelievably also in noodles, which prompted the shutdown of one of the biggest noodle manufacturers in China. Not to mention the complete violation of human rights and the advocacy of slave labor, but of course, Asians don't care because it's always about the money, so ethical and moral values go out the window. It's not just with the Chinese, the Vietnamese also use formaldehyde in their noodles, and the Thais fry their foods with thin layers of plastic lacquer for a crispier texture W. Hate of her. It takes to make a buck, never mind your health. I find it interesting that Asian people like to buy the most expensive houses and the most expensive cars, yet, they shop for the absolute cheapest food, groceries, cleaning products, kitchenware, eh? anything else, you name it. Asians will only spend lots of money on items that they can show off but be cheap with items that they can't. In Asia, for instance, there is a flood of counterfeit A. 
Kanak Afi. Tems from fake. Designer clothes and accessories to fake Rolex watches and mobile phones eh? Anything else? You name it. Remember what I said about Asians wanting to show off? Asians love to buy fake name brand clothing and other fake name brand items in order to show off a Xi'an pride. Theorem number two, status, because it's cheap a Xi'an pride theorem number one, money. And it gets them attention from people a Xi'an pride theorem number three, power. Getting attention is a personal power that real why means nothing to anyone else, but as long as they can impress their friends and family, then that's the only power that they need. Just like Asian parents with personal power to control their kids, it means nothing to anyone else, but it means everything to them. You can see how all of this goes back to my Asian pride theorems, I real why can reveal the truths about Asian culture with just my three Asian pride theorems. I completely check off everything on my shopping list so I head back to my car without haste, since my parents always get on my case for taking too long. As I approach my car, I can see a short, old man with whitish gray hair, wearing a shirt with the acronym CIA and below it, Chinese in America. I giggle a little, thinking to myself, what a fob, then opening the trunk of my car to put the groceries. He's proud to be Chinese in America T. Hat's cool, I have no problem with that. In fact, I think that's great. This reminds me of a job fair that I attended last summer at UCI. I saw a group of Chinese students handing out flyers and pamphlets, which proclaimed the burgeoning surge of Mandarin, the traditional Chinese language. They even had a huge banner with the title, Mandarin, the language of the future. How is Mandarin the language of the future when it's already been here for thousands of years? I understand what they mean about the growing importance of China political why and economical why, thus, the growing importance of Mandarin, but how many people do you know t? Hat are not Chinese w. Ho actual why speak Mandarin? And I'm sure that the Chinese students at UCI are proud of the fact that Mandarin is the most spoken language in the world w. L. Duh. There are over a bilion people in China alone. Mandarin is localized to Chinese people. I don't see how it's the language of the future when only Chinese people, and maybe a few missionaries in China, speak Mandarin. It's like with Yao Ming, a Chinese-born NBA basketball player, every person in China claims that he's the best center in the history of the NBA, yet he's never won a NBA championship, let alone winning even just one playoff series. Chinese people just jump on the bandwagon, only if it's something Chinese. If Yao Ming wasn't Chinese, people in China wouldn't say the same thing about him, if Michelle Yi wasn't Korean, people in Korea could care less about her, same with Paradorn Srichafan if he wasn't Thai. Asians love to follow based on their own ethnic skin color. But following Yellow doesn't necessarily mean it's good. Would you want to follow Mao Zedong, Pol Pot, or Kim Jong Il? If Asians want to follow, then follow on principle, not skin color. Anyway, in regards to Mandarin, it's not even the official Chinese language. China's official language is simplified Chinese so even they don't use the real Mandarin. I get the feeling that someone is looking over my shoulder so I turn around and sure enough, I see the old man with the CIA shirt staring right at me. I decide to stare back, not blinking or moving, like we're engaged in a duel yet. T the old man wouldn't budge. So I walk. Slowly to get inside my car and my eyes continue to lock with his to maintain our rigid, coupled stare. He's lucky that I have to get to the bank before it closes or else I'd be in big trouble. I guess no one's ever told him that staring is impolite. I also hate going to the bank, a special why when my parents make me do it, while they sit at home and watch the news all day, particularly on Asian news channels. Auntie does this as WEL, Gabriel's parents are the same. I can save them time and tell them what's on the news every single day, bad news, murder, bad news, war, bad news, and on and on. Since every day is the same crap, why bother watching it? 
The next day will air more bad news anyway, overshadowing the day before, so there's no point in watching it every single day if the news just gets worse and worse. Besides, Al News channels are owned by corporations so you get a daily overdose of corporate propaganda. Most people don't know that NBC is owned by General Electric or that ABC is owned by Walt Disney. And since these corporations have investment sponsors, that means that their financial interests come first, not the news. In fact, corporate mainstream media has been caught red-handed many times for airing fake news in order to boost ratings. If you don't believe me, just go to prwatch.org. But my parents don't care because they're completely brainwashed by watching so much television every day. It wouldn't hurt if they actual why read once in a while instead of watching so much TV, I can't believe I'm having to say this so. CH role reversal. At least the line at the bank isn't long today. I usual why come here to make a quick deposit each week for my parents, since I'm such a good son oh. Or rather, I'm such a bad son. Since they're making me do it. I feel a light tap on my right shoulder so I turn around to see an old lady, wearing a navy blue voile print dress, her white hair pool head back with a large clip. She stares at me like a puppy that just peed on the rug. Why? Oh man, what is your nationality? The old lady asks, not knowing that her inquiry is quite discourteous. I almost got into a scuffle with an old man earlier so I'm not about to make my day worse by messing with an old lady. M. Why nationality is American, I reply correctly. N. Oh, no. What is your nationality? The old lady repeats, mistaken with her terminology. I feel bad for correcting her, but she needs to learn not to be so impolite. M. Why nationality is American? Nationality means your national status, as in the nation of your citizenship. Perhaps you mean ethnicity or racial heritage, I correct her, with luminous clarity. She looks at me with a confused gaze. S. Oh what are you? She asks for a third time. Luckily, it's my turn to go up to the tell ER window so I leave her standing there, already answering her question twice. I wish people would understand the difference between something as simple as nationality and ethnicity. If she looks at her U.S. passport, it clearly states, Nationality, United States of America. It doesn't state, Nationality, Old White Lady. For crying out loud. I don't know why I'm having to deal with old people today. This is the exact reason why Americans put them in nursing homes. Too bad Asians don't put their parents and grandparents in nursing homes, due to their austere obedience to culture and custom -o are so. They would have you believe. In reality, they don't want their friends and relatives to talk bad about them for putting their parents and grandparents in a nursing home, in order to save face. Many Americans can't stand taking care of their parents and grandparents when they get old. For the younger Asian generation, we don't have a choice in the matter, since our parents and grandparents live with us when they're old. But on the bright side, when they start living with us, it'll be our turn to spank and discipline them, like what they did to us when we were kids. We'll get to tell them what to eat, what to wear, when to go to bed I can't wait. Payback's a bitch. Now that I'm done running my I mean, my parents' errands, I have to get home and start doing my homework. Abject slavery never ends. I enter my house, enjoying the silence, and walk into the kitchen for some organic orange juice. As I pass by the kitchen table, I notice a pile of letters, most of them opened, sitting on top of some junk mail. What catches my attention is the fact that several of those opened letters are addressed to me. This real why gets me angry. I hate it when my parents read my mail. Asian parents think they have carte blanche to go through your mail, read your personal diary, wiretap your phone using electronic eavesdropping and surveil ants devices. Okay, maybe that's a bit extreme. But it's not like I have a secret life outside of UCI, like being an agent for the FBI or running tactical reconnaissance missions for special ops, it's just simply a matter of respect. 
I don't go through their mail because I respect their privacy so they should reciprocate as WEL. Two bad Asian parents don't know what this word means, literal why and figuratively. My enjoyment of silence comes to a halt as I hear the piano playing from the living room, which means that Jordan's back home, probably practicing to become an acclaimed concert pianist just so that she can prove how much better she is than me n. OT that it's real why. Al that hard. Many Asian kids have spent countless hours at the piano, like Jordan, and me. My parents forced me to play the piano since I was in elementary school, telling me that I would be successful in life if I played WEL. It's interesting how they started making me play the piano per the advice of one of their Asian friends. I'm sure that Asian friend advised, P. Ling. The piano looks good on the resume, for a good paying job. It's sad that Asian parents force their kids to play the piano o. Are any instrument for that matter n. OT for the love and appreciation of music, but just as a way to get ahead since it looks good on your resume. I personal why love playing the piano, from classical to contemporary, for the pure inspiration of music. I resent my parents butchering this with their lust for a good paying job. Joe. Written. Johnson. Come here. I hear mommy crying from upstairs. Jordan and I rush up to my parents' bedroom. Mommy is sitting on the bed, while talking on the phone, her eyes fill Ed with tears, yet, none of them falling. She raises her arm, beckoning us over and mutters, Gee. Rand Ma pass away this morning. 10. Waiting at the airport is easily one of the most excruciatingly painful experiences, right next to getting a root canal. People rushing by, passenger transport vehicles whizzing here and there, baggage carts overflowing everywhere, the terminal like a city of its own, a special why here at LAX, Los Angeles International Airport. My parents booked our flight late last night, right after news of Grandma's M. Why? Grandmother's D. Eat from lung cancer, due to her smoking more than two packs a day even though Big Tobacco claims that there are no links whatsoever. I did not cry about her passing away, not because I'm heartless but only because I never knew her, like a grandson should. I rarely saw her, only twice during the early years of my childhood, once when my family went on vacation, the other when I just started high school, both of them for only a few days, and now, the third and final time for her funeral. My grandmother, on my father's side, lived in Asia all of her life, never leaving once, not even for a short vacation. I think she was scared of flying. She possessed a very warm demeanor, from what I can remember, always offering candy to Jordan and me and always smiling, even with two missing front teeth. My most salient memory of her involves the news age. ER watching of it. She would sit in her wooden rocking chair and watch Asian news channels all day from morning until dusk and oh joke. Maybe that's where my dad got his news watching obsession from, same with mommy, auntie, and Gabriel's parents, all of them from their own parents. Grandma was a sweet, old lady unlike the typical Asian grandmother, like the one on my mother's side. That grandmother, whom I call mean ma, possesses a furious temper. She would scold and order her maids around constantly, even telling members of her own family what to do as if they're her own slaves. She lives in New York T. Thank God. W. Hitch is. Conducive to seldom visits to the East Coast. Believe it or not, domineering and oppressive grandmothers are a part of Asian culture. That's why I can't step foot into Gabriel's house without his grandmother yelling at him oh are even at me. The reason that Asian grandmothers act this way stems from a type of psychological displacement, they were treated wrong so they must treat others wrong. In Asia, sexism and misogyny are both pervasive, where men can seemingly step over women like their dirt. With this type of prejudice and discrimination, it's no wonder that Asian women take it out on others, particularly their own children. Also, 
family structure and hierarchy in Asian culture play a strong role in the development of this mindset. Everyone's familiar with China's one-child policy, but what many people don't know is that many families will throw a baby off a cliff if it's a girl, only stopping until they conceive a male. In Asian culture, the first son is like winning a biological lottery, even though the chances are real why just 50 to 50, go figure. So in Asia, men are meant to rule and women are meant to be subservient. Now I can empathize with why my grandmother, at least the one on mommy's side, acts like a fascist. But this doesn't excuse the fact that I don't know grandma wel at al. It's actual why quite common among the younger Asian generation, for us not to know our own grandparents, even the background of our own parents. It's not because we don't care, it's because they don't share it with us. There's a saying in Asian culture, which I'll paraphrase, p. Eopal don't. Remember the loud chatter of the fool, only the silence of the wise. Thus, Asian parents and grandparents are rather silent when it comes to sharing their family history and background. It's the same way with Gabriel. He doesn't know much about his parents or grandparents, even though they all live under one roof. No wonder there's a lack of communication in Asian families and oh one talks. I can't believe that I've been sitting here in the same damn chair for almost two hours, waiting for our flight, the one that's being delayed indefinitely. I've been repeating the words. Slut, twat, dusky again. Early the entire time I've been waiting here, without fear or hesitation, because my parents only know common cuss words like shit and fuck but have absolutely no idea of any other ones. Gabriel and I enjoy saying cuss words all the time out loud, a special why in front of our parents, because they have no clue what's going on. Asian parents real why need to stop being so ethnocentric with their culture and learn a thing or two about American culture, since they do live here. Jordan, sitting to my right, is silently reading one of the many textbooks that she brought with her. I think she packed more textbooks than she did clothes, that nerd. I shouldn't make fun of her because I actual why packed a bunch of textbooks as WEL, only because my finals are coming up in a couple of months. If I don't get A's, you know by now what will happen to me F. Either duster. So you have Jordan doing her homework, my parents reading the paper, and just a few rows in front of us, a woman yelling at a man. And wouldn't you know it? T. Hey Asian, too. I. Can't help but to eavesdrop since I'm bored, and besides, I'm not going anywhere, anytime soon, plus it sure beats the hell out of studying for my finals. From what I can make out, she's mad at him for packing the wrong clothes in his suitcase and forgetting to pack some other items. The man, presumably her husband, tell s her not to yell in public, in order to save face. And as you now know, saving face is extremely important in Asian culture. After all, you can't have people thinking that Asians aren't perfect, so everything must look good on the outside, albeit, everything is completely messed up on the inside. Asians secretly hide behind a facade of good grades, high SAT scores, big houses, nice cars, successful businesses, but deep down inside the heart of it all, their family lives are extremely dysfunctional. Look at the suicide rate alone for Asian Americans, astronomical why higher than whites, blacks, and Hispanics. In fact, Asian Americans have the highest suicide rate among women. Moreover, 2 million women attempt suicide in China every year, with many more not counted due to saving face. And in Japan, it's normal for people to jump off the subway platform onto a moving train. This form of suicide is actual why considered honorable because of saving face. But jumping onto a moving train will actual why cause you to lose face a. And the head, the arms, the legs, the entire body into tiny, little pieces. The most disheartening is the fact that Asia possesses the highest suicide rate in the world. Sometimes, it's not so good to be number one. Many people attribute the high suicide rate to the pressure of performing and the pressure of conforming. Sure there's pressure, peer pressure, 
parental pressure, financial pressure, blood pressure J. UST kidding B. UT not everyone jumps off a bridge because of pressure. So it's definitely more to it than just pressure. It's real why because of the lack of communication and the lack of affection in Asian families. In Asian culture, for instance, seeking help for personal issues is a sign of weakness, and thus, losing face. Once a person loses face, that person is deemed a failure, an outcast, a leper. That's why Asians stay silent and quiet, keeping it all bottled up. Then they find substitutes for the lack of communication and the lack of affection through money, status, and power be. Because that's all they know how to do. Everyone has to be perfect, no one can have weaknesses, no one can ask for help, and absolutely no one can talk about any problems or issues, in order to save face. Asians think that if they don't talk about it, then it doesn't exist and therefore, all the problems go away w. Wrong. The lack of communication is what exacerbates all the problems and the issues. The lack of communication is why Asia has the highest suicide rate. The lack of communication w. Hichil go so far as to say no. Communication I. S why Asian families are so dysfunctional. There's no one in my family to talk to about my issues and no one to empathize with what I'm going through because I have to save face, to maintain the p perfection of Asian culture. But I become so alone that thoughts of suicide permeate fiercely within me, almost to the point of palpability. Asian parents have to understand that their children are not mindless robots, programmed to get straight A's and to overachieve beyond all measure and above everything else. We are human beings, too that need love, affection, appreciation, and communication. That's why I envy so many non-Asian families here in America. They may not have the most money, the best cars, the nicest homes, but they have the most loving, caring and supportive families that will be there for them no matter what the circumstances are and will help pull them through any problem, big or small. That to me is immensely more important than getting straight A's, achieving a perfect SAT score, or even getting into medical school t. Oh know that my family will be there for me unequivocal why, with genuine love and undying support. But the only thing I can hope for is to not get a beating from the good, old feather duster. N. Ow boarding, flight 6025, Los Angeles 2, I hear the audio announcement for our flight, loud and clear, which means that we're ready to board an unbearably agonizing 15-hour, non-stop flight, while watching five continuous replays of the same in-flight movie, eating delicious gourmet airplane food and feeling completely miserable because of the cabin pressure and jet lag L. Ife doesn't get any better than this. Standing in front of us, as we're waiting in line, is a businessman, dressed in a black suit with a dark navy blue tie L. Okay. Very uncomfortable maintaining the look of the status quo CA. Reading a pager and PDA on his belt, wearing a wireless headset L. Ike Secret Service, risking his life in order to protect innocent corporations A. ND handling four distinct carry-on luggages, a blue laptop case, brown nylon backpack, a black leather briefcase and a grey-wheeled cabin tote, the trademark of any successful executive, or in my eyes, the overworked and underpaid. This man looks like one of those married to his job, talking loudly about a business deal deadline tomorrow morning. I also overhear him saying that he's been working over 100 hours a week, since last year, just on this business deal. For crying out loud, a job is just a job. W. Hi do. People make it more than what it is. You do it to get a paycheck, pay your BILS, and that's it. Who real why needs to work 100 hours a week to survive in America? And if you real why think about it, the manager at a corporation and the cashier at McDonald's are not real why that different be. Auth work for a paycheck and both have to kiss someone's ass. Sure, the paycheck is dramatical why different, 
but it's not worth grinding 100 hours a week like a slave, working on weekends, being on cal all night and day, having to drop everything on a whim just because your boss says so n. OT my idea of what you call ad. Ream job. Or m. Irical job. At least the. Guy at McDonald's doesn't have to be on cal or work mandatory full time. Try telling your boss that you want half days from now on. Too many people are brainwashed by corporate culture, this farcical cognitive ideology that you have to give your entire life for the job. A job is just a job, to pay the BILS and to have money left over to buy unimportant crap, like the habit of the average American. Speaking of jobs, a friend of mine recently got hired at a software company and said that it's the dream job that he's always wanted. Just because he has his own little cubicle where he gets to put a picture of his family on his desk, along with a cute, little coffee mug that reads, W. World's greatest dad, doesn't make it a dream job age. He still has to work his ass. Off. He works at least 70 hours a week, including weekends, as WEL as being on Cal for emergencies a. Eh? ND it's not like he's saving lives, he's just a software engineer. What my friend doesn't realize is that his dream job still makes him someone's stepping stool, taking orders from someone above and having to do whatever they tell him to do. Is a dream job real why to take orders like a slave from someone above? It sounds more like a nightmare to me. And trust me when I say that in any occupational field, there's always someone above you so just because you're above someone else, it doesn't make you all that special J. UST. Look up, and there's still an ass to kiss. Plus I find it funny that they give out special, little titles like E. Executive Manager. And D. Director of Operations, so that you feel important, when in. Reality, you're no different from an indentured servant, taking orders from someone above, as I have already mentioned. And the moment your company starts doing bad, you'll be the first to get that pink slip, no loyalty with these loving and caring corporations. I've heard of people working at companies for over 40 years, only to be fired because their pensions are too much. Remember, everyone's expendable, even the CEO, Al working slaves until they don't need you anymore W. Here's the honor in that. Corporations could care less about you since you're nothing more than a social security number enslaved to make them profit. Iron Eichel Y, corporations are required by law to make profit, without regard to any moral or ethical value, so that's why there's no loyalty, and that's why corporations don't truly care about any of their employees. Because once they're done using you, they'll just use someone else. But too many people are living in bliss, in a state of denial and suffering from cognitive dissonance. People need to wake up and understand that our employment system, monetary system, and every other system, including our government, is controlled by banks using the power of money. And what is the R? O O T of all evil. Our monetary system is real why nothing more than modern day slavery, with people having to submit to employment in order to pay off their debts, even though money, in the very first place, is created out of debt through loans by banks, specifical why the Federal Reserve, a private banking institution that is as federal as Federal Express. Anyway, you can't pay off debt with more debt so therefore, this system continues to exacerbate, with BILIANS of people working like hamsters running on the wheel, to fuel the empire that is the banking system, which controls the money that controls the wages that controls the labor that controls you. The only difference between slaves of the past and the slaves of today is that today, they are paid slaves. As Peter Joseph, producer of the film Zeitgeist Addendum, said, p. Physical. Slavery requires people to be housed and fed, economic slavery requires people to feed and house themselves. In other words, slaves back then were shackled in locks and chains and slaves today are shackled in suits and ties. So instead of living and working like a paid slave, do what you truly love and most importantly, enjoy life tea. That's what real why matters. Of course. 
Try telling that to Asian parents and see if you get the feather duster or steel buckle belt. The plane's completely full of passengers packed like sardines, so I try to maneuver the best that I can to my aisle seat way in the back. I manage to get all of my bags up into the top compartment, next to Jordan's textbooks. I've already eaten a full meal before leaving the house, so my plan is to just sleep through the entire trip there. I'm lucky that I'm a deep sleeper, with the ability to tune out my parents if they decide to nag, and best of all, ignore Jordan if she decides to brag. It's been quite a while since I've been back to Asia, the wild, wild east. It'll be good to get away from the pressures and stresses of school. Maybe I'll even get to meet some new friends. I just hope that the Asians in Asia aren't as focused about money, status, and power as much as the Asians are here in America. Are are they? 11. The plane lands as I start to wake up, the sun shining intensely into my eyes, with a fury like wildfire. Jordan's next to me, reading the same differential calculus textbook that she was reading before we boarded the plane. She's a machine, my little sister. My parents are still reading the same paper as they were at the terminal gate, so everyone's a machine except good old Johnson. Now I'm hungry, and I regret not eating some of that deliciously scrumptious airplane food. After picking up our luggage from baggage claim, we walk outside the terminal to greet our relatives, just two of them since they came in a small sedan, my oldest uncle, whom I just call uncle, and my youngest cousin, Bo. We'll be staying with them for the duration of our trip. Bo walks up to me, presenting a big smile. H. How are you? I. Am doing good. I politely reply. He nods and picks up our bags a. Any by one a. And he. Puts them in the trunk of the car. That will probably be the most that we say to each other during this trip, since that's the only English he knows, and I only speak English. Uncle makes small talk with my parents, leaving Jordan and me to discuss how all six of us are going to fit into a compact car. After Al is said and done, we pile in, stretching our arms and legs for every little bit of room, grasping for the luxury of comfort. I then realize that not one hug or kiss has been exchanged this entire time. Driving through the city is a fantastic visual journey in itself, my eyes unmoving and unwavering, like a lion's first glance at its prey, locking onto the vast display of neon lights smothering the cloudscape. Every street looks indubitably the same, narrow and compressed, with food stands overflowing the sidewalks. I see my life flash before me a dozen of times, cars running through stoplights as if red's the new green. No wonder so many Asians drink and smoke, they just live it up now since they'll most likely die driving first. On the bright side, I won't have to worry about getting into medical school if we do indeed crash and die. Uncle roll s up the windows as we apparently pass by a slaughterhouse, our nostrils overwhelmed by the stench of manure and rotting meat. Welcome to Asia. We arrive at uncle's house with all our body parts intact, actual why, it's an apartment since everything is compressed in the city. Walking up six flights of stairs is no laughing matter, try doing it with jet lag and hunger eh? ND two big suitcases plus an overstuffed. Backpack. All right, I'll stop whining. Four locks click in sequence, like time demolition, the large door opening fast and wide, such that we rush in as if it's Black Friday at a shopping mall. Oldest auntie, sitting in an old rustic brown chair, waves us over with both hands. I notice what's on TV, the news B. IG. Surprise. Asians love watching the news all day. The apartment is just like auntie's house in Palo Alto, traditional and passe with antiquated oriental furniture. I see lanterns, same as the ones from auntie's Palo Alto house, hanging from the ceiling, with red New Year couplets covering the wall s below, even the wall scrawl s appear to be exact duplicates. I guess both aunties have the same interior decorator. My parents hand oldest auntie and uncle wrapped gifts and red envelopes while simultaneously bowing, a customary gesture in accordance to Asian culture, for due honor and respect. Oldest auntie and uncle bow back, 
My parents bow again, oldest auntie and uncle bow back once more, all four of them continuing with bows, lower and lower each time, trying to outdo each other. Many people think that bowing is a form of honor and respect, but it's actual why nothing more than a form of subservience. Shaking hands, for instance, is a true form of respect because both people are doing it while standing at an equal level, at the same time, staring eye to eye, completely equitable in the exchange. However, bowing entails that one person be lower while the other person is higher, at unequal levels, not at the same time, not staring eye to eye, inequitable in the exchange. Centuries ago, peasants would bow to kings, no vice versa. That's why bowing has become obsolete, because it's a form of subservience. It's only done in Asia because everyone's brainwashed by custom and culture, which brings me to the gift-giving part, a compulsory gesture if you're Asian. Anytime and every time you visit an Asian relative, you must bring a gift or money, hence the red envelopes, which might as WEL be transparent so that people can show off how much is real why being given. I didn't bring a gift when I visited auntie in Palo Alto, because she knows I'm an asshole eh? And because I'm American. But Asian people don't general why like being assholes so they l acquiesce to custom and culture, even if they don't want to. When I visit friends of mine, I don't give them gifts, I'm sure you don't. Hell, when I visit my local pub, I don't give my usual bartender a gift w. Hitch I'm sure he'd enthusiast Eichel why take, while praising Asian culture just for the sake of getting a gift. What I give instead is a handshake, a hug, a pat on the back r. Eel. Genuine gifts of endearment, not like cold, heartless cash. Besides, I don't enjoy buying people's opinions of me, with gifts and cash like typical Asian people, so instead I offer my honest and genuine self, like it or not. If I'm required to give someone a gift for meeting them and for them to like me, then I'd rather stay home. For Asians, it's always about the money. Mommy, Daddy, Oldest Auntie, and Uncle are sitting on the living room sofa while Jordan and I are sitting in imperial hardwood chairs across from them. Uncle pours tea from a black, cast iron teapot into little porcelain teacups, in celebration of new visitors, as you now know is customary in Asian culture. While he pours tea for us, I can't help but to notice the towering stack of newspapers and magazines on the coffee table, a miniature leaning tower of Pisa, ready for a big foul. I glance over to see more stacks of newspapers and magazines, as WEL as a multitude of opened water bottles on top of the end table, right next to my parents. It's unbelievable how Asians love to see OLECT everything. I've been to many Asian homes, and virtual why all of them share the same pattern of mass garbage col action. Mommy's explanation is that Asian people need to protect and acquire possessions that they themselves once lost during times of war and economic depression, so therefore, they store things in order to prepare for the future, an emergency disaster plan of sorts. Her logic appears to make sense, but how the hell is a crap load of old newspapers going to help in an emergency? Better yet, how the hell is a crap load of old magazines going to help save a life in the event of an emergency? The truth is that Asian people see OLECT things because they're too lazy to recycle and too selfish to donate, or in other words, too selfish to give anything up, in order to amass all the wealth that they can. Whether they are cognizant or not, COL acting material possessions is a form of wealth, which deleteriously is a product of greed. Don't get me wrong. COL acting things itself is not evil. Rather, it's the obsession of mass COL acting, which displays greed and covetousness, like with Asians. Oldest auntie gets up and clears away the tea set, now full with used teacups and an empty teapot, while uncle turns towards Jordan and me with fixating eyes that hooks us like we're two fishes caught in his net. B. Off you, uncle says, as he roll s up each sleeve of his green, Wool sweater, N. E. D. Study hard. As if I don't already get enough lectures from my parents about this. S. 2D hard. To be rich. 
at least he doesn't sugarcoat the real reason to st. Udi hard. Why? Yes, uncle, Jordan, and I simultaneously reply, with a perfunctory tone that would be clearly obvious to any person, regardless of cultural distinction. Uncle knows that we're blowing him off so he quickly announces, why? Oh you study hard or I? Spank both you. Is he being serious? I look towards Jordan, seeing her jaw drop deeply, I guess that answers my question. N. Oh more talk, uncle instructs, N. Ow dinner. It's customary in Asian culture for the men to sit around and not do shit, while the women cook the meal, set the table, serve the food, clean up the table, and last but not least, wash the dishes. In fact, it's considered disrespectful and IL mannered for men to assist in the process. As you already know, misogyny is pervasive in Asia, where men are seemingly allowed to step over women like their dirt. Even Confucius said that oh. NLY ignorant women are virtuous. Now I'm out for somebody else doing my chores, writing my research papers and taking out the trash on Wednesdays but not at the expense of someone else, a special why not for the egregious purpose of sexism. Instead of sticking around and not do shit, I decide to take a walk outside, since I don't want to be ostracized for helping with dinner, plus, I don't feel like getting another lecture again about having to st. UD hard. Upon opening the main door of the apartment lobby, I can see the sun with reddish gold highlights surrounding its majestic luster, starting to set below the white cumulus clouds lazing above. It's surprising that I can actual why see the sun, with the air so heavily polluted with industrial soot and smog from the deluge of cars, that's Asia for you. Who cares about air quality when there are more important things like money, status, and power? If you know me by now, you know that I'm just kidding. Walking on the sidewalk is quite a difficult task in itself, particularly here in Asia. The pavement seems to merge with the street, more often than not, without warning or indication. What's worse is that my situation is exacerbated by close-range maniacal drivers, seemingly trying to hit human targets L. Ike me F. Or points. No wonder so many Asians are moving to America I, too, wouldn't be able to cope with this kind of lifestyle. It's a good thing that I have to head back for dinner, thus, thankful why and graciously ending my short and very dangerous walk. I enter the apartment just in time for dinner. No one is seated yet because assigned seating is customary in Asian culture, with the head of the table general Y reserved for the head of the household T. Hat would be uncle. In Asia, the men usual why wear the pants in the family, however, some women like my grandmother, mean ma, h. Ave the bals. To wear the pants. Go get em, grandma. With all of us at the kitchen table, oldest auntie starts serving chicken feet soup, handing me bowl after bowl to pass down the family assembly line. Bo, who's been rather quiet, smiles as I give him the bowl with the biggest chicken feet. Most Americans would probably feel squeamish at the thought of chicken feet in their soup, but it's actual why quite delectable. Next on the menu is sautéed beef with broccoli and bean sprouts in lemongrass sauce. Everyone digs in with their chopsticks, like sharks in a feeding frenzy. All Americans would feel squeamish at the incessant double dipping of chopsticks in the main entree. Al the saliva, spit, and germs becoming community property for everyone to share. Many people would consider this unsanitary, and I'd say that they're right. No wonder avian flu spreads like wildfire in Asia T. Hey might as well eat food from each other's mouths. But you only live once so out of sight, out of mind, as I continue to dig in. Both mommy and daddy start talking to uncle and oldest auntie about my future I mean, their future p. land for medical school. My parents express grave concern about the tuition costs, while uncle explains that I'll make more than enough money to pay for everything. Oldest auntie declares that we must sell stocks in order to supplement the medical school fund. Uncle interjects with his idea of selling land, 
land in the family for nearly five generations. During the entire exchange, I remain reticent for I know that I have no say in this, even though it's my own damn life. Plus, I don't want more spanking threats from uncle, so I sit quietly, smiling without discernment. After they're through with me, they move on to Jordan but without worries or concerns this time. They discuss how glad and proud they are of Jordan, unlike me the black sheep of the family. All of them, including Jordan, continue to denigrate me with insults of indolence and ignorance. I guess the fact that I'm sitting right in front of them is of little a. Till why no. Consequence. Remember the old man with the CIA shirt and his constant, unwavering stare? I guess it's an Asian thing, no shame and no humility. Why talk behind someone's back when you can talk in front of them? Why talk behind someone's back when you can just stare at them? I wish I had the bravado to stand up for myself, to tell them that I'm sick of this Asian culture nuthugging. But like the vast majority of Asians, I have to keep quiet and remain silent about the truth. I just wish that there was a way for me to reveal the truth oh? Are rather truths. About Asian culture to the rest of the world. D. O. U. Bo asks Jordan, thinking hard of the right English words to say, L. Ike the. Dinner. Why? Yes, Jordan replies with reproach, not even looking at Bo. T. He foods delicious, Bo, I quickly add, intervening. I know why Jordan's acting this way. She thinks that Bo is below her because he didn't go to C.O.L. Edge, so he's not worthy to talk to her. What is she a? Stuck up, eminent princess? I find it rather disappointing that Asian people have to j. Udge a book by its cover. Bo works in uncle's restaurant, so apparently. He's a loser. But it's not his fault. Asians are notorious for forcing their children to work in the family business t. Epical why a restaurant. This is one reason why Asians have such big families, in order to get free slave labor from their children. Going back to Princess Jordan, the whole W. Hat do you do? Mentality is pervasive among Asians, sizing you up to see if you're worth talking to. Asian girls are a special why guilty of this. I know so many Asian girls that will not date a guy unless he has a COL edge degree. Pray tell, does C.O.L. Edge teach you how to find the right guy? N. O. Does C.O.L. Edge teach you how to find a good boyfriend? N. O. So what the hell does? Being a C.O.L. Edge graduate have anything to do with relationships? O. Any word, status. It's Al. About status, aka image. Most Asian girls will only date guys that look g. Good on paper. Who? Wants to date a nice guy, with a strong moral character and a benevolent disposition? Screw that. They want a guy that's rich, that buys them all the stupid crap that they'll ever want, a guy willing to be the BAL to their chain. That's why I'm surprised that Emily's giving me the time of day. Maybe it's a good idea that I don't tell her any of this. B. Oh, on behalf of the family, thank you for picking us up from the airport. I announce. To show him my gratitude. I can tell that Bo doesn't understand what the hell I just said, since he's giving me a blank stare, but he smiles anyway, a smile that reveals genuine respect and regard. This is probably the first time in a long time that anyone's shown any appreciation towards him. Dinner is almost over with most of the meal in our bell ies. I have a couple of bites left on my plate, but I can't leave the table until I'm done eating everything, every last grain of rice. I've been forced to do so since I was a kid, because I was told that wasting food is bad luck, creating an ominous future full of failure and misfortune. But the truth t. He truth that Asian. People won't dare tell you I. S that it's all about control. If you're able to force your kids to eat everything, even the very last tiny grain of rice in the bowl, then you'll be able to control them co. Enter all everything about them a. T a very young age. 
After all, children are highly impressionable. If you can make them eat something as insignificant as a microscopic tiny grain of rice, then you can eventually control what they do, how they think, what kind of grades they get and most importantly, what they become, particularly their future profession, if you care to guess the only two. Control them as kids so that you can control them as adults. Make them subservient as kids so that you can make them subservient as adults. That's the reason why so many Asian kids become doctors and lawyers, not because they truly want to, but because they've been conditioned by their parents with this method of control, this power of control. And as I've revealed to you before, Asian children are raised as prize-winning sheep in order to become future doctors and lawyers, ultimately functioning as a retirement fund in order to pay for their parents' retirement, so that their parents can live in a big house and drive a nice luxury car, when it's all said and done. So there you have it, all this control, manipulation, and power starts at a very young age, from the very bottom, with just a little grain of rice. Now you know why the staple food of Asian culture is rice. 12. Grandma's wake is scheduled for 9 o'clock at a local funeral parlor, just a few blocks down the street near a parking lot, making it convenient for everyone. Uncle, oldest auntie, and Bo left approximately an hour ago, in order to prepare for the arrival of guests, because improper funeral arrangements can wreak disaster and misfortune upon the family of the deceased, or in other words, bring bad luck that l cause them to lose money. My parents are getting ready as WEL as Jordan and me. I've been told that we're skipping breakfast, to pay due respect for the deceased. It doesn't help that mounds of food a. Apples, oranges, bananas, crackers and various types of good luck candy a. Replaced all over the apartment in large, golden bowls. As a ceremonial offering for grandma's passing. All over the apartment, in addition, are red leaflets and red joss papers, with red couplets overlaying the wall s. I find it ironic that it's forbidden to wear red at an Asian funeral, yet, homes can be enshrouded with red all over, for happiness and good luck. I guess they don't want that happiness and good luck being wasted on the dead, since they all need it for themselves and their stock portfolio. After about half an hour, my parents, Jordan, and I walk over to the funeral parlor, even though I suggest taking a taxi as a more prudent option, since it wouldn't look too good if all of us died at the hands of crazy Asian drivers before the funeral. We make it there in one piece and enter the main entrance of the reception lobby. Each of us is given the following, incense, an empty red envelope, and an armband, except that mine is white so. Is Jordan's. Uncle. Oldest auntie, my parents, and the elderly are all wearing black bands around their arms. I understand the reason why, deference. According to Asian custom, older people should not show respect to younger people, dead or alive. The white armbands act as a visual aid, a reminder to put the young ones in their place. Moreover, Asian funeral rites and obsequies, as WEL as burial customs, are determined by the age of the deceased, but more importantly, status and position in society. So even when you die, you can't escape the money status power influence of Asian culture. Bo greets us as we make our way into the corridor of the main room. He joins us to light up the incense pee. Roveted to each of us earlier I. In order to pay our respects, as is. Customary at an Asian funeral. We approach the tall altar table, constructed of solid rosewood in a dark cherry matte finish, topped with two bowls of fruit and good luck candy, and a big picture of grandma in the middle. Right below the altar is an urn, full of burnt joss paper and prayer money, in order to provide grandma with sufficient income in the afterlife. I think to myself, what could grandma possibly buy in heaven? A BMW? A Big Mac? Cigarettes. That's what got her in this mess in the first place. Even after death, Asian people can't let go of their obsession with money. Thereafter placing the lit incenses in the burner, we move towards the obligatory donation box, as money is always offered to show respect to the family of the deceased, 
supposedly to help defray the costs of the funeral. I say so. Posedly. Because that's the same thing I've been told about giving cash at Asian weddings. T. Oh help defray the costs. The same thing I've been told about giving cash at Asian tea ceremonies T. Oh help defray the costs. The same thing I've been told about giving cash at New Year's T. Oh help defray the costs. The same thing I've been told about giving cash at every single Asian ceremony. Even for a ceremony that celebrates an Asian baby being alive for just a few months. I hope you are starting to see the pattern here, for every occasion, there's money to be made. No one wants to pay for the cost so make someone else pay for it, plus, you'll likely end up making a profit, which is real why the objective anyway, because it's always about the money. Bo leads us towards the front row, where the seats are completely empty. It's surprising that my other relatives haven't shown up yet. After sitting for a while, I start to get dizzy from the spuming smoke, coming from all that burned incense, my contact lenses beginning to dry up as a result. Jordan hits me on my left arm because I'm sitting too close to her W. Hat love. From my little sister. Everyone else around the room is quiet T. Oh oh quiet P. Robably meditating. Waiting for the sermon to begin. All of the sudden, I hear several ladies crying out, wailing as loud as they can, like it's a competition and the prize is a pot of cash L. Iteral Y. It's considered. Good luck in Asian culture to wail as loud as possible, just in case the deceased has left a large fortune, Al the rich is going to the loudest. Fake crying for money, these ladies should consider a career in Hollywood with their affectation. And the Oscar goes to. As if this isn't bad enough, Al of the lady guests in the room, including those in my family, are dressed up entirely in designer apparel, carrying brand name handbags, flaunting glittering jewelry from head to toe and wearing full facial makeup as if they are about to do a magazine photo shoot, again like it's a competition. Remember the BMW 550i competition, the invisible competition between my parents and my neighbors? Are they the same ones that set up this competition at grandma's funeral? What are they competing for? You guessed it, status. In Asian culture, only traditional hemp cloth mourning clothes are to be worn to a funeral. Furthermore, guests are not permitted to wear jewelry, based on the superstition that ghosts will take away all the wealth. I guess they threw this tradition out the window, because how else are you going to show off your wealth, status, and position in society? Even at a funeral, it's always about the money. Speaking of superstitions, Asian culture has a notoriously long laundry list. From N. Ever point at the moon or your ears will get chopped off. To D. Oh not keep a pet turtle or it. Will slow down your business. Asians believe and practice the Sil East, most asinine. Superstitions. It wouldn't surprise me if there are more superstitions than there are word characters in the Chinese, Korean, and Japanese languages combined. I remember reading a news article which stated that 90% of China's middle school students have actual why had their fortune told, I can only imagine what the statistics are for the other Asian countries. I know that there are superstitions in every culture, but here's what's interesting, see if you can find the pattern for the following superstitions. 1. Do not use knives or scissors on New Year's Day as this will cut off fortune. 2. Sweeping or dusting should not be done on New Year's Day for fear that good fortune will be swept away. 3. Do not wash your hair because it would mean washing away good fortune for the New Year. 4. Black is the color of feces and wearing it will bring disaster and bad fortune. 5. Females should not pierce their ears because wealth would foul through the holes. 6. Bind fingers at a young age so that holes don't develop, otherwise, wealth will leak out of the hands. 4. Crying out loud. As if Asian women haven't suffered enough from feet binding, do they now have to bind their fingers in order to fulfill a ludicrous superstition? I hope you can see that the pattern has to do with fortune and wealth, 
aka money. The vast majority of Asian superstitions has to do with fortune and wealth, aka money, since it's always about the money. Asian people are so obsessed with money, that they create superstitions in order to give them a feeling of control, even though they're not in control a. And D never will be. Remember how. Asian parents love making their kids eat every small microscopic grain of rice from their bowls. It's about this idea of control, this imaginary abstract idea of control, that they can control everything, specifical why good fortune and wealth, aka money. This I illusion provides them that W. Arm, fuzzy feeling. So that everything will be okay, when in fact, it's just L in their heads. Asians create belief systems that they use to manage their fears and anxieties, superstitions are a form of those systems. As Edmund Burke said, S. Upperstition is the religion. Of feeble minds. Now you see why there are so many superstitions here at Grand Ma's funeral. Asians are insecure about their own mortality and seek to deny it by using incredibly complex belief systems to downplay its significance, in order to appease their own fears and anxieties. They can't accept the fact that someday they will die so they need to at least believe in something, even something as preposterous as superstitions, just to placate their own fears and anxieties. I'm starting to sound like a damn psychoanalyst. Jordan punches me in the left arm again, this time signaling me to approach the casket a. Simple nudge would suffice. I walk up, passing a salute of white flower bouquets, to see Grandma, her wax-like face exhibiting such a peaceful and solemn elegance. I stare at her, my body motionless and my eyes indifferent, not knowing exactly what I should do. I can see my parents crying tea. He whole room is crying. I just, can't cry. I know that I've never been close to Grandma, but something else is preventing me from crying for her, something that's clutching my will to express any emotion. After all these years, now I know what it is, my parents. Though not my parents per se, but the way they brought me up, the way I was raised. I was never taught to express my feelings and never taught on how to react at times of emotional stress. I was only taught to get good grades, to get into a good COL edge, to get into a good medical school, to get a good job B. UT never taught how to express my emotions. I. Real why I'm just a robot. I've become a robot, without love or affection from my parents N. Oh. Hugs, no kisses, not even a handshake from them, my entire life. And now when I'm faced with the need to cry, I can't, I just can't do it. I just don't know how. I walk back to my seat and sit silently, my face buried in my hands. I need some time to think. Jordan is looking at me with a queer eye, as if I've been vilified as an outcast of the family A. And D I don't blame her. What type of person can't cry at his own grandmother's funeral? What kind of person can't express a single emotion at the sight of a deceased person? Am I real why heartless? Or did I just never had a heart to begin with? I continue to sit there by myself, ruminating about the gravitas of my personal crisis. I wonder if I'm the only one in the room not crying. I glance over at Bo, who's also just sitting there, fixed and stationary in his seat. Perhaps it's not just me. Perhaps Bo is thinking the same thing. Our austere upbringing is probably the reason why we're both sitting in our seats, unmoving and static in our body language. I guess it's not just me, so now, I don't feel too bad. In fact, I should appreciate everything my parents have done for me, even their mission to raise me with a strict, austere upbringing. Thank you, mommy and daddy, for turning me into an emotionless robot, just for the sake of money, status, and power, so that you can retire in a big luxury mansion at my expense once I'm a rich doctor, even though I've always wanted to be a writer instead, I seriously need counseling. I've been sitting here for almost an hour so I decide to get up and go outside. Notice I didn't say T. Aka walk outside. Because I real why don't feel like joining Grandma today. I. 
Depart through the parlor hallway and upon opening the main entrance door, I see a group of eight men M. Most of them elderly L. Ugging and shouting as if it's a New Year's party and not a funeral. Intrigued and curious, I walk up to them to see what's going on. One of the men, approximately in his late 80s J. Ugging by the intense wrinkles around his eyes and blinding white hair I. S. Holding playing cards in his left hand and money in his right. The man across from him, much younger, approximately in his 40s J. Ugging by his receding hairline. And slight patches of gray hair S. Lamps down his cards and jumps up in jubilation, waving his hands high in the air, as if he's the main attraction of Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I can't believe that they're actual Y gambling, with Grandma's casket only a few feet away. I ask the man in his 40s why they're gambling, and he explains that it's an Asian custom A. LSO. Superstition T. O gamble in order for the gambling noises to scare the ghosts away. As if the donation box isn't enough, do they now have to make money gambling? Have they no shame? All these superstitions without any sense of respect, morality, or ethics. I guess money is king in Asia. And whom does this king rule over? Interlude.